22. Welcome everybody to the Porter and Timber Council meeting. I'm sorry for the delay start. Um, if we may stand and start with the pleasure of meeting. Right to your heart and begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right. Please call the roll. All right, Brandy. <laughs> Yes. Seki? Absent. David Lasher? Here. Lori? Here. Passage? Yes. Gabriel? Here. Isam? Here. And we have a car. Thank you. Uh, item 5 is a consent calendar. It has on it uh, three meeting minutes and one monthly expenditure report. Any board member uh, may choose to remove an item off the consent calendar to be voted on individually. Whatever remains on the calendar gets voted on as one item. Uh, and as well, if members of the public want to make a comment about any specific item, we'll take it off the agenda. So, uh, uh, if you could take A and B off, please. A and B. Okay, items A and B are taken off the consent calendar. What about items C and D? Anybody has any question or comment about them that they want to discuss? Any public member wants to comment on them? All right, can I have a motion to approve the consent calendar items C and D? Uh, yes, I want to make a motion to approve consent items C and D. And I have a second? Second. second. Oh. Okay. All the vote. All right, uh, Brandy. Yep. David Bailey. Yes. Jason. Yes. Mira. Yes. Becky's absent. Uh, David Lasher? Yes. Lori? Yes. Assad? Yes. Gabriel? Yes. Isam? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Item 5A is the meeting minutes from March 13th. They're attaching A to the agenda. Um, March 13th. Like um, page 5, the third bullet point from the bottom. As a stakeholder mentioned, it should be Rex and Parks Commissioner Sylvia Pastoris mentioned that Toll Brothers was not voluntarily generous in building this park. They were required to provide this park to the city. Um. Unless this is verified that the city are uncomfortable assigning a statement to someone who's not here to, to, to do that. Table so it and we verify. We, without objection, I'd like to table item A by that. Okay, for item 5B, <coughs> what comments? I'd like to go back to 5A. Um, she stipulated that in her comment. So if the media taker wanted to go back and read those minutes, she did make that comment to the board and to the public when she got up. That's there. not the point. The meeting that notes that she took doesn't mention her saying that. He wants to say that she said that. Right. And we have the video on it, so we'll look well, at it. Well, that's my point. Okay. Go check the video and we'll determine that that's correct. Okay. On 5B. Okay, so 5B on uh, number 7, Treasurer's Report. I have a correction. Um, the last bullet point. It says uh, something new this year. I don't believe it's something new. It should just say there will be an annual maximum of 1,000 per year. Uh, that's for the board member reimbursements. So okay, but it is a new thing this year. We're not here last year. That's Are you sure? Point. That's not what I said. If you're, I mean, if that's what I, I didn't that's say. That's not that. what you said, then that's fine. Don't take it out of there. 
No, we'll take it out. Just yeah, put it there. Put it there will be. Yeah. Any of it to do that doesn't cover you. Any other comment on 5B? That's all I have. <clears throat> okay, can I have a uh, motion to approve 5B with the noted edit? So moved. Can I have a second? I'll so second. Okay, any public comment? Yes. I can't hear, I'm sorry, I'm getting old. I can't hear the difference oh. between David or Jason. Mm -hmm. And if I could, this is what something, another one of my neighborhood councils does, is they talk about themselves in the third person. Say, I'm like, <laughs> Francis Pollock makes a motion, and Brandy says, Brandy seconds it. But if you could talk about yourself in the third person, then I don't have to say, who made the motion? But if seven, one of these five guys made the motion. All right, we got it. It's it going to be awesome. So David Lasher made the motion. Okay, David Lasher. Great. Make your life easier. I'll just put my hand behind your back and you move around. Who seconded the motion? Who seconded the motion? Lori? 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 David Balin. Yes. Jason? Yes. Miran? Yes. Becky? Absent. David Lasher? Yes. Lori? Yes. Hassad? Yes. Gabriel? Yes. Isam? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Item 6. Treasure. Okay. Uh, passing down the screenshot from our financials. And. Uh, I backed out the median project because as of now it's not approved and probably going to take a month or two for that to get approved. So we're showing net available 16000 and the events have been paid for. Everything's been paid for except the food for tonight and the copies for tonight. So I'm going to be deducting as we approve motions off of this number here, the 16000 and uh, I got the bank card, which I emailed all you guys. And uh, that's all that really comes to mind. Any questions? Well, on the back of the day, did you ever cut off? What is that now? So, well, we're going to go through it on the budget. Okay. But um, looking at the NPGs so far, we're, <coughs> we're basically at 9,500 approved in NPGs. And I think our budget was 10,000, I believe, for NPGs. But we're going to revise the budget anyways. So um, I'm, I put another $500 one in case we approve the one tonight. Okay. Um, I, I had sent in uh, January, December ish to, to start the treasure the receipts from my out of pocket expenses on the, the holiday party that we've never gotten a motion on to reimburse me, but that's right. several hundred dollars we also have to think about. Um, what's the rough amount on that? Let's see. It's around 400 inches. 400 bucks. Okay. Um, yeah, I emailed you back like, to send you the... Yeah, I've Okay. We'll talk about it offline. Any other question? Any public question on, on the financial report? All right, thank you. Uh, item, six. item seven, presentation from representative elected officials or city department. So we have a few guests. Ron, would you like to stand up? Yeah, like he's before you. Oh. <laughs> 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 this is significantly younger than what I thought. It works, it works, baby. You know, when I get a corded mic, I feel compelled to sing Lou Rawls. So. so, good evening, folks. I'm the uh, de facto uh, representative from Council District 12. Uh, Colin Cruz is uh, out of destinations unknown. I know that it collectively breaks your heart that he's not here. I can see David about to openly weep. Uh, but I'm here in his stead. Uh, not a lot going on. Uh, I'm the district director for, uh, I'm having deja vu all over again, Gorman, saying I thought you were in like Timbuktu or something. 
Didn't you? When, when was the departure day? All right. Starbucks on me. Uh, time of your choosing. Um, so it's budget uh, season right now, and they're uh, you know working uh, steadfastly at City Hall to finalize things. I believe. Where, where's our Where's our fact totem? Where's the line at? Is it the 20th of May when that's supposed to be finalized? Do you know that? Yeah, about that time. So. Uh, Greg has uh, always been kind of a, a budget hawk and, and uh, very involved when he was a full-time councilman. So he's working diligently to make sure um, uh, all the you know the eyes and the T's are crossed and those kind of things. Uh, an issue that was raised when I last attended this meeting, I think a couple of meetings ago, a conversation about uh, speed regulation on Reseda at Kirkholm. I guess there was concern about. Uh, so good news, uh, working with the uh, Department of Transportation and Ken Perusman. Uh, it's, it's, it's this funky category called unfunded at this point, but it is approved at, I guess there's a crosswalk at Kirkholm already. Uh, they're gonna put all the bells and whistles, the light at the intersection with the, you know, the embedded things and the overhead flashing lights. Uh, they've done, you know, if you know anything about trans Department of Transportation, they do their due diligence in terms of, uh, you know, Everything is really kind of uh, not, not litigation driven, but they're concerned about, they're always looking at how this all going to play itself out. They did a, a comprehensive study of the street. I guess there was a pedestrian fatality uh, on Reseda uh, a while back. As it turned out, I guess it wasn't, uh, uh, they, you know, they, you know they, they weren't using the crosswalk or whatever it was. It wasn't, it, it, so they were kind of extenuating circumstances. And so, long story short, is that nothing really was justified uh, to, to the Department of Transportation in terms of things to be done. Uh, but because we love you guys, called in a marker. Uh, I may be working at Panda Express in two months anyhow. So I figured, uh, I'm just kidding. But uh, so they're going to do that for you guys. They're going to put that through all of us. They're going to put that up on Reseda and Kirkland. So that's good news. Okay. Um, there, uh, one motion that uh, Greg Smith did, uh, it's in committee, uh, and it's in support of Assembly Bill 161, and that is uh, just uh, paper receipts upon request at all kind of retail restaurants throughout LA. It seems like kind of a trivial thing, but it really is a big deal. Just the amount of me who have been writing and see that 14 foot long receipt, you know, with all the, all the coupons. So. Um, that's kind of what's going on. Uh, we have a senior dance, you guys are well aware of, right? Coming up on May 30th. I look at David because he's my, I'm kidding, you're not so <laughs> David, do I get the first dance? I don't know you're going to be there. <laughs> oh, I got to take my Geeko Baloma, man. I'm, I'm low energy tonight. Anyway, that's uh, going to be a wonderful event, and um, that has always been very well attended. And um, I think, did you, were you guys involved in the sponsor? I, I'm not sure, but yeah. Yes. A question, question for you. Um, you might be leading into it, but are there any updates on the renaming of the park to ET Park? ET Park. Oh, so which is the one we just had a ribbon cutting in? I'm not the local. That's, that's, that's ET Park. Uh, we call that ET Park. No, I know. Don't go there. Is considering renaming it. Yeah. What well, else? The. Um, well, we had a ribbon cutting. Yes. I also. I don't want to mix up. I have no idea. Man. I can find out for yeah, you. Yeah. Greg mentioned. When Greg mentioned it uh, when I spoke with him. You guys want it changed or not want it changed? Like it, but I know that he was considering to start the process. You wanted you you, you don't uh, like ET Park. No, I do. Oh, okay. He okay. asked us to take a position on it, and everybody calls it ET Park. Nobody calls. Oh, I see. Yes, yeah, also. Okay, I got you. Yeah, yeah. So right. Yeah, because it was, yeah. Calls it that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, we have staff meeting tomorrow. I'll talk to see what the uh, the status of that is. And then just lastly, you guys did a great candidate form. I was there, and uh, you know, it's, it's really tough to manage 15 candidates. Man. Yeah, man. That is an impossible Why don't task. Let us confirm. Yeah, yeah well, however, however many showed up, it was a great job. So with that, not a lot going on. Just uh, we're working diligently every day. If any of you constituents out there have any concerns at all in terms of, you know, anything at all you need picked up, bulky items, all kinds of stuff going on, you know, trash, trees, resurfacing, any kind of things at all, let us know. We're still full service outfit, okay? okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple of intersections, I think on Plumbers, you get closer to the mall and to Target and things like that, where frequently at, at busy parts of the day, it's really getting backed up and mm -hmm. kind of getting dangerous. What would be the process to getting transportation to look at putting protected left turns? Protected, well, you're talking about uh, on Plumber, like near uh, Corner Bakery, like, like Chase Bank, that, 
That neck of the woods is where? Near, yeah, near that area, there's, a, there's one, the, 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 one of the ones, is, there's a few. One of them is right before the Target Big Boy complex. Um, what? Yeah, there's, there's the Corbin one. Oh, okay, and yes. There's, a, there's another one, yeah, down Plummer, closer to like Chase, and as you get down the mall, there's just at really busy parts of the day, it's starting to get really dangerous because there's so much backup. And yeah. It's so busy, you have to pretty much wait until it turns red before you can turn. And oh, I see what you said. You're talking about left turn signal. As yeah. opposed to just like making it when you have a, a gap. Right. Action. You, right. Do me a favor, and uh, if you can just, you know, I'll open our, our transportation guy. You can send me an email. It's the easiest way to do it. It'll just, you know, break the trail and get an answer for you. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, the fatality mentioned, um, was that up at Kirkham or was that down in Assumption and Receiver? The, the study was done, when the request was made, it was like, just in general, that length of Reseda was, was problematic. Was so they did, yeah, it was, I'm not saying it happened there, but it, it, he did the study, he, he, he said, in fact, there really is a very, very clean history of that street. As wide open as it is, and as problematic as it is, it really is not the documented uh, history of bad things happening to justify it. And, and you know, the transportation is not, you know, you guys know Ken, I think. Some of you know Ken. He's, he's, he has no emotional attachment. He's just going to look at it from an objective point of view and go, you know, what's just... But, so he's going to put that in as a good faith gesture to you guys because it matters to you. But, yeah. I've got two things on that. Yeah. Okay, that was my neighbor. I witnessed it. I'm not, I'm not minimizing it. You know I, that. And yeah. I will give you the fact... I'll give you the respect and the fact that you were reading a report or that information has been related to you. Right. And you just didn't investigate. That was my neighbor. He was killed, I witnessed it. Um, my video system also captured it. My neighbor's video system captured it. He was crossing legally, but here's the deal. It's an unmarked crossing. We can't even get a, just a marked crossing. Well, now what street is that at? It's the corner of Asuncion and Reseda. It's the first block north of Rinaldi. First and a lot of people cross street as you go up the street. Okay, so you're uh, going up the street. Then yeah. North and again, north. when I when I'm conveying this to you, I'm not minimizing it. You know that, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm He's the transportation guru. Sure. It's not my my, my bailiwick. So, so what is the request that you'd rather have it there, or you'd rather have a marked no, no, cross? No, no, the Kirkham, we just need a crosswalk. I'm not looking for lights or a pedestrian island, but just a simple crosswalk. It's a local crossing point. Oh, you, you, you it's unmarked. You're just saying people have to just gun it. There's no there's no markings. Well, there's also it's like bends, so you get halfway across the street, and then you realize cars are coming down at you. Yeah, so that's fine. The okay, all right. I'll bring that up to uh, yeah. Brian, here's the box. Yeah. We've gone through this with. This gentleman from DOT now for three years. DOT reacts. They are not proactive. They only react if there is enough fatalities to justify a stop sign, which is absurd. The problem with Reseda is that you have a stretch of a mile with no real crosswalk. It is not that there is high traffic of crossing. It's the fact that there's a mile street uphill that has no crosswalk. If well, you yeah. live there, you have no way to walk across to the other side. It's a big street. Man. It's a very yeah. difficult street. So this is a That's proactive, this is a proactive good faith gesture on his part. I mean, it may seem trivial, but he, it's going to be all the bells and whistles at Kirk home. There's already a crosswalk that will be so the overhead lights. And you're right, uh, they're very reactive. They're very reactive on, on many levels. But, you know, he's got, I, I, I don't want to get into like, you know, defending the, the volume of work and the stuff they have to deal with. But, you know, it's personal to you guys, to the DOT. It's, it's, it's data, it's data, and it's a map, you know, they don't, so, yeah. Any other issues? Well, the other issues on the west side of Racine, in that same stretch from Sunshine Kirk home, the east side of the street lights are very clear because there's a maintenance district. On the west side, there are 20, 30, 40-year-old pine trees right on the edge of the sidewalk. The stop lights, the street lights, have been obscured down to like 10% light. There are trees going to two feet above the sidewalk. And every week, every night, I see families or strollers walking. Oh, we can get that handled right away. I reported that about six weeks ago. And to who? To Jonathan Cotto? Yes, absolutely. Okay, I'll follow Jonathan up. Jonathan Give me a favor. Follow up to me, and uh, and, and and I'll I'll, I'll so encourage you. It's it gotten so bad that I watch the car stop. The guy hide behind the tree. He's using his cover and urinate right in front of me. And there are heroin needles left on the ground because people park there because. <laughs> So it's, it's just a variety, of, it's just a, yeah. just a well, mother of that. Okay. But bottom line is if the trees were trimmed, it would alleviate a lot of that. Yes, sir. Just a simple tree trimming, right? Okay. Uh, Randy? Yeah. I, I'm just curious, um, you said that, that there's a lot of work and a lot of data. Are, is the department just understaffed? Do we need to 
push no, well, listen, I mean, you guys have a different experience of him because you're, you know, you're, but I've worked with a guy when I was with Zion Robinson. And he did, you know, they are, understandably, a lot of what drives everything they do is how can this go south? Because, you know, the moment they put in a, 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 you know, a light, a stop sign, a crosswalk, a, a bench, anything like, you know, allowing a, a, a bus bench, it's, it's all through this filter of, you know, what can go sideways here. And, and so, uh, when, and they get requests all day, every day for signage, restrictive everything all over the West Valley. Uh, and so they have to look at it and go, you know, even this thing that I just mentioned is unfunded at this point, so they have to find funding for it, they will. But they just have a list the size of Detroit in terms of things that need to be done. Right. And, and they, did, they did triage like anybody else. There are, there are, you know, there are, you know, street intersections and, 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 and areas in the West Valley that are just, you know, like the intersection, I think it's the most dangerous intersection in the country or something, Racine and Devonshire, you know, those left tours, there's, act, there's more accidents there per capita than, you know, so they really have to prioritize it. I don't want to speak for Ken, he's, you know, he, he, you guys have a, you know, your own experience, uh, but that's what he said he would do, right. so. I don't want to, I don't want to, I understand that. I don't want to minimize his great efforts. I'm just yeah. saying, what can we do to support him? Does he need more staff? Does he need more funding to complete projects? What would help help him and help them? You know what? Uh, it's he, he's always been responsive to me. I just I I think um, you know when stuff needs you know every sign that goes. I mean, he works with you guys a lot, of stuff, You know, whether it be. You know, Granada Hills, uh, National Triathlon <coughs> Champions, those signs, those all go, so, you know, if you can't imagine the various and sundry things that he's responsible for, all that stuff, and the manufacturing signs, speed signs, lights, all that, and, you know, bike lanes, all that stuff goes through his office, so. All right. Thank you. All right, you got it. Is that public property or also private property? Where's that? Public and private? Uh, uh, so no, that would be, uh, that, that's, Department of Reservations. It's just like public. McDonald's right there where you're talking about Devonshire and Virginia. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Everyone always makes a left out of there. Oh, that would be, it, well, it, 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 it is a it, 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 partnership with obviously Valley Traffic, LAPD. Like, you know, if there's some things like that, they're not, they're not side people. That's the kind of stuff we do a partnership with. You know, like it's just no left turn. There isn't one there that's not side to side. People are still doing it? Yeah. 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 So that's the kind of stuff that we can bring attention to our office and we'll work with the uh, respective departments. So let's get some money. Yeah. 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 All right. Thank you. Um, Jared. Good evening, everybody. Jerry Dunning here on behalf of Supervisor. I'm here on behalf of uh, Supervisor Barker, of course. And uh, um, and first and foremost, we have 11 neighborhood councils that touch the fifth supervisorial district. You guys by far have the best food, so that's worth the uh, that's worth the price of the um, I do have uh, just two very quick updates I want to give. Uh, I uh, spoke at the last neighborhood council meeting regarding a hearing that was going to take place at the Chapsworth Courthouse regarding the illegal landfill operation at Unincorporated Chapsworth. I'm pleased to report that we did receive summary judgment in parts of what the county was requesting. The big one is a permanent injunction on uh, class six or higher trucks being allowed up into the property. So basically, the, the, the gentleman that was conducting the operation, he's now been permanently banned from bringing in high level trucks up into the property. That's what, they, that's what we really needed. Um, there's still a long way to go. We still have another hearing coming up in May to talk about some of the other issues associated with the dumping. Um, we also know this gentleman has a tendency to, he's like a, he's like a weed, uh, he's like a, He's like a weasel, he pops up every so often <laughs> in different areas. So we very much have to stay on top of him and, and keep an eye on what he's doing. But I am, we, and we did have a very significant turnout from, uh, from community members that attended. We do think that, that allows the judge to see that this is an important case to the community. And the judge even made a comment that he's getting tired of this case, that it's, his long, it's the longest case he has on his pocket. He really wants to go away. Uh, so we're very happy with how that's progressing, but we still have a little bit of a, of a ways to go. Uh, the second, uh, um, when you're driving west on the 118 at DeSoto, and you look across, you know there's a big housing project taking place in the uh, north, uh, north end of the, uh, uh, that property. That's called the Deer Lake Project. 
and that is a county project, a county unincorporated project, and that project is going to remain within the county unincorporated area. It's not going to be part of the city of Los Angeles. So that's going to be, uh, law enforcement will be the county sheriff's department. What you're going to see at, actually at Topanga, the winning team, there's going to be a new sheriff's substation going in there. And, um, um, and while that is a direct benefit to our unincorporated residents in Indian Springs, Indian Falls, Twin Lakes, Chatsworth, Lake Manor, et cetera, um, we do think there is a benefit to the greater city as well as the city residents. We tell our sheriff's department all the time, the, the patrol station that oversees unincorporated Northwest San Fernando Valley is our Lost Hill Station in Calabasas. So they're driving back and forth between Calabasas, even to Soto, and Topanga. And we tell them all the time, and I always give fair warning to the residents and constituents, if you see a sheriff's patrol car it's paying and he can pull you over or she can pull you over just as well as any LAPD cruiser can. And so we encourage our sheriff's department that when they're on city streets to be proactive and, and, and assist LAPD with uh, vehicle enforcement and other law enforcement needs along that stretch as they're going back and forth. That substation is not going to be permanently manned and meaning that it's not going to have a dedicated deputy that works there 24 7 it's more to be used as a way station of sorts we're going to have a computer there there will be a meeting room a uh, community meeting room as well that the community will be able to utilize it's just so deputies can utilize it to fill reports have lunch use the restroom etc but i think it will be a positive for the entire region is because you'll, you'll be you'll be able to see it very clearly from tomega and the um, 118. and Isan, i don't know if it's appropriate to do this now yes it is okay um, and the last thing I want to do is, Susan, can you come up here, please? I'm going to be very blunt. I hope no one takes offense to this. We don't, we don't do this for outgoing neighborhood councils very often. In fact, I think this might be one of the first ones I've done. Um, but I did feel it was very important that we do this on behalf of Susan because of all the work that you put into the neighborhood council and all the work that you did on behalf of the residents of Porter Ranch. I, oh, I've shared this story before, and you guys have all heard it from me before, but it really was the ad hoc committee that Susan chaired on behalf of the neighborhood council that convinced the supervisor to go for more than just the health study, to go for the three million air monitoring as well. And it was that work that really, because we were just gonna, I, I, I was the devil's advocate. I was gonna say, no, we can't, we gotta be conservative, let's just get the health study. But the ad hoc committee through Susan's leadership really pushed us and said, you've got to do the air monitoring too. And we got it. And that was, I think that's a direct re uh, reflection of the work that we put in Susan. So on behalf of Supervisor Barger and the County of Los Angeles, I want to thank you for your three years of dedicated service to the Porter Ranch Neighborhood Council. Yeah. I do want to share a piece of amazing news with you. This board paid for Clean Streets, Clean Starts with Don Larson. That was a nonprofit. Brandy has a beautiful <laughs> binder. Um, and they were a brother and sister. We were trying, trying, trying to get Section 8 housing. And it took us a really long time. And David got him a job, um, Gilbert a job interview. And Jason showed up for the clean. Clean Streets work days, and he saw them, had breakfast with them, and we just kept at it, kept at it, and a lot of other people helped. Crystal, Scotty, Wade, these are other people with other organizations, and Friday a visit to them. Ah, they're in a Section 8 housing in Cascadia. So um, that's amazing. There's so many members of council that um, complain a lot to Ron. <laughs> about the homeless, but I feel like this neighborhood council was one of the few that really took it upon themselves to get involved with these people's lives, and hey, we took two people, got them off the street, so that is that is a huge win, and if every neighborhood council did that, we wow, we'd be a long way to solving this issue, so just thank all of you, you all had a piece of it, you all voted for it, 
you all participated in it, and I just, I really thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, the other thing is, <clears throat> since I'm a former government worker, I have a lot of documentation on all my committees. It is all <coughs> online on the shared drive, so I leave you very well documented. <laughs> so um, whoever, and Brandy, thank you for taking the homeless committee. It's, it's, it's a heart-wrenching committee, but it's also very rewarding, as you know. <laughs> so um, it's one of the hardest committees, but it's really necessary. And um, yeah, the sustainability the ad hoc, I know people will take those over. And I know I leave you, I leave all of this in good hands, and I just really appreciate all the support and the help and the dedication that you've all done, and, and the whole community actually has shown me. So thank you very much. Good evening, Leo Alpert, South Coast Air Quality Management District. Uh, first, let me add my uh, recognition, Susan. It's always been a pleasure working with you, and it was so sad when you spoke the other day and you told us about your plans. But hopefully, you'll still be here on May 29th, because although I may not have a certificate, I've got lots of flyers. So, uh, not sure if everybody in the audience had a chance to pick these up when you came in. Uh, does anybody need one? Yes. Anybody on this side? So I'm just going to make a brief announcement about the uh, upcoming meeting that we're going to host. Uh, it's a public information meeting. Uh, this is regarding the Title V permit, which uh, if you're not familiar with Title V permits, are required by the Federal Clean Air Act for agencies such as ours uh, to issue for uh, facilities such as uh, the uh, natural gas uh, storage facility nearby here. Uh, we received a request to have a meeting. It's not something that's typical that we do, but we're happy to honor that request. And then three weeks from tonight, May 29th, at Cal State University Northridge, we're going to have uh, a public information meeting. Uh, if I may point out, this is one of the busiest flyers that we've put together. But uh, in particular, I want to point out that we added the map and uh, the arrow showing exactly where the meeting is going to take place in the Student Union, Northridge Center Room. Uh, it's the same location, I think, of several other meetings related to uh, this topic that have been put on by other agencies in addition to ourselves. Uh, parking is going to be free with validation available at the information booths number one and three, uh, again near the intersection of Dordoff and Zalza. So I don't want to take up too much time and the thunder of what you will hear uh, in three weeks. We just want to ask for your assistance and letting everyone know about this meeting taking place. Uh, I want to thank uh, Isam and also Matt for your assistance in uh, putting it out through email and social media. Uh, hopefully will also be included in the uh, newsletters of the local electeds. Uh, I just want to point out, so again, this particular meeting is specific to the renewal of this permit. Uh, lots of other very important topics related to the facility that either are within AQD's jurisdiction or outside of AQD's jurisdiction. Uh, we just want to make you aware, so your expectations for this particular meeting will be focused on the permit. But it's also a really good opportunity for folks to get a really good understanding, and actually Matt and I spoke earlier today, about how exactly uh, the process works as far as what is permitted, when there are issues that you call 1-800-KIT-SMOG, and thanks to everybody over the years who's called us, you know, what does that trigger as far as a response, and both in terms of what is permitted at the, at the facility and what is not permitted at the facility, and how we work together with our other regulatory agencies um, that will be some of the information that can be discussed at this meeting, and that's why we're coming out. So um, I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, it is kind of technical, so but we're going to try in this meeting to just walk through exactly what the permit includes and how AQMD's rules work in terms of its permits and the critical role that the community plays in letting us know when there are incidents so that our inspectors can come out and diagnose what's going on and we can respond. Uh, yes? I'd like to get Ken right to the heart of it. So what happens if they don't get the permit or renewal? If it's rejected? Uh, I, I cannot answer that question, I'm sorry. So. Let me ask it a little different. Has the permit been renewed already? No. No. Are we discussing the permit renewal or are you just telling us facts about the permitting licensing? No, we're, we're here to discuss the renewal of this permit. And as the flyer indicates, we've received comments, so we want to address those comments. But at the end of the day, what, uh, what part of the answer I can, I, can, I can respond to you is uh, we're obligated 
to renew this permit for items that we regulate unless there is a, a, a credible case made for the particular things that we regulate and why the permit should not be renewed. Uh, we all know what, is, what occurred at the facility, um, obviously much of which was involved with the failure of the well and uh, any items that weren't there in order to, to stop the leak are outside of AQMD's regulatory authority. Uh, there are other agencies like Dogger that you're very familiar with. So, um, what we are obligated by, by Federal Clean Air Act statute is to focus on items that we permit through this Title V permit, and we can walk through what exactly those are at the meeting, or if you want to review them. And actually, ESOM has actually gone through uh, very carefully all the items that are in there, and um, you know, either tonight or in the next three weeks, if you'd like to ask him a bit about it. Um, but that's pretty much what we're going to be doing. But the permit has not yet been renewed. We're coming out to the community because it was a, a request for us to do that, and that is the intent of this meeting. Any other question? Uh, is it possible in any capacity that as a result of this that the permit might not be renewed? I, I don't want to speculate. Is it a possibility? I think that there, there, everything's possible, um, but I don't want to make any commitments one way or the other. No. Uh, but we certainly want people to understand that um, it is important to understand what this permit is and what it isn't and what it covers and what it doesn't cover. And we understand it's technical in nature, so we will do our best in this meeting to not get you know, too much into technical speak because our intent here is to be transparent and open and collaborative. Um, but it is very important for you to especially understand beyond the Title V permit how exactly AQMD works and with the community and responding to concerns and complaints and notices to comply, notices of violation. So those are very useful information that will come out of it. You know, um, just earlier you heard about air monitoring and health studies. Those are all very important topics. Um, but we just urge you when you come to this meeting to just focus, focus on this item. There will be other meetings in the future either by our agency or other agencies that will focus on those other items. Thank you. Public question. Um, is there a website where, is there, there's an application I assume for this permit, is there, that available online? Yes. And then, can you just briefly say what they're applying to be able to do with this permit? Well, they are applying, and Esam, you're even more technically in depth than I am because if we went it through... The letter that yeah. the Neighborhood Council sent to the PUC has any information on where the permit application is, and what that link is and what that's what that is. And uh, it, you know, we're kind of pressed on time. He's not a technical person to describe it. So he's letting us know about the event. Any question for right. him about the event, let's put that out and move on. Uh, Matt, Matt, quick. So the public comment period is closed, but is this a further part of that that will be used to decide to issue the permit or not? Or is this just giving us information? This is a public information meeting. The public comment period is closed. So we will address comments that we received and explain the answers to them. But that is, isn't further intake that will affect the outcome of the permit, yes or no? If, how do I put it? Um, we, we, this is not an extension of the public comment process. So we will address the comments that we received. Uh, there could be questions asked then as well. And all of this will be taken into consideration as then the decision is made to, to whether or not to renew the permit. But to be clear, there is time on the agenda for public comment. Yes, yes, yes. Whether you take them into consideration or not. Yes, absolutely. We would not come out to the community and not want to hear from the community. Okay. We, want, we certainly will want to have a back and forth conversation on these topics. Okay. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Please, come on in. Hi everyone, um, I'm Danny with Assemblywoman Christy Smith's office and the new Valley Rep. So bear with me, um, I'm new, but I know I stand on the shoulder of giants and um, uh, look forward to partnering with everyone. Within the office, I actually serve as the comms director as well, so if you need any outreach help, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, and just want to keep it very brief. Um, some updates on my end. Um, my boss, uh, some of the women, Christy Smith, has authored um, a diverse suite of bills. Um, she has 13 bills going through um, committees right now, um, including ones that extend homeowner protections, um, expand college affordability, um, mental health, 
um, and then obviously education is her meat and potatoes. Um, she's also uh, keeping state agencies accountable as well. Um, and uh, recently she uh, partook in a um, state agency hearing for the DMV as well um, to um, address more accountability and transparency within that agency. Um, within the district, we're coming off of a very successful Porter Ranch Community Coffee. Thank you to everyone who attended. Uh, There's a great turnout and she loved meeting everyone. Um, and uh, just wanted to highlight a couple things that I left on the table. So first, um, we have a mailer that went out um, with the speaker's appointment workshop. If you're not familiar with what that is, it's um, speaker Anthony Rendon has um, a state appointed board and commission, um, or a list of uh, board and commissions, and they include you know, higher education, um, small businesses, um, uh, the status on um, women and girls as well, and so there are a myriad of issues you can get involved with, um, and it's an application workshop that's put on by our office and also the speaker's office. Um, it'll be on May 18th. This is the first time it's, it's ever happened um, um, in our district, 38th Assembly District, so it's very exciting for us. And lastly, um, I just have a handout um, with um, a list of state agencies and what our office can help you with. Um, we have a fantastic case worker with the office and can assist you with anything. Um, yes. Any questions? Yes. Oh, maybe just, Hi. Just, just one second. Go ahead. Oh. Um, I, I'm just curious. Since this takes place during the Homeless Children's March and I won't be able to attend, is there yeah. going to be a recording so I can see what you Yes. Um, or we, we can also touch base on um, how you can apply as well, And um, but um, we'll definitely make sure to have some recording our live stream. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions on the board? I understand. Anything from the board? Okay. Bon. Well, where does she stand on the elimination of Prop 13 for commercial properties and that she smoked support bars being open until 4 a.m. in the morning? So I think that was two separate <laughs> issues. Yeah. Um, it could be legal in some way. I can really get back to you on that. Uh, with propositions, um, it's a little bit different since it's not a piece of legislation. Um, and then in terms of Senator Weiner's bill, um, I can really get back to you on that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Um, we are miserably behind schedule. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Mr. Bell, I'm sorry, yeah, Mr. Bell, can you give us a quick budget advocate report? I mean, stop, talk fast or <laughs> delete some items? How about make it two minutes? <laughs> Um, so, I'm Glenn Bailey, I'm one of your budget advocates for Region 2. You've seen Brian Allen the last uh, few months, my apologies for that. Um, my understanding is that you received through Susan the, uh, neighbor, the budget advocates white paper, so um, it's also available online, electronically, etc. I just want to let you know, just visually, what the City Council and the departments and the budget advocate. This is this proposed city budget. The budget, the, de the two books of the department detail and the revenue. And that's what city council uh, budget finance committee has been working on during the past week plus. And the budget advocates have been at those meetings. And um, on Monday, uh, the budget advocates presented before budget and finance committee, um, not the whole white paper, you, it is recorded, you can view it if you'd like. You have nothing else to do. Um, budget day is June 29th, a Saturday, downtown. We want to make sure that every neighbor council is represented. Um, you do need to officially do that by having your two budget representatives appointed um, by then. Um, if you don't designate two budget representatives by default, it's your president and your treasurer. I just give you a quick update. On Monday night, we changed our bylaws so that now the budget representatives serve at the pleasure of the board. It's no longer a one-year term. So if you appoint budget reps, they'll continue until you decide to change them, just FYI. There is, as you probably read in the general manager's, um, in the monthly profile, a proposal to extend the budget advocate terms for one year. Again, I oppose that, but it has uh, been put uh, postponed for a month for neighbor councils to weigh in on that. Um, either way, there will be 
Hey, there is now one vacancy. Uh, Deidre is no longer a budget app. There is now a vacancy in Region 2. That will be filled at some point, probably at budget day. Stay tuned. But if you'd like to be possibly a budget advocate, you must first become a budget rep uh, from one of the neighbor councils in Region 2. And then there will be a vote amongst all the budget reps of Region 2. So those are my six points. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, I'm going to move on. Uh, item 9, public comments. I have... Mr. Bieber, please. First, okay. Okay. Thank you. Hi. Oh, hi. Hi, everyone. I'm sorry, I'm going to do this as like theater and around here. Having my back to people. My name is Jay Bieber. I am one of the candidates for Council District 12. Uh, nice to know most of you here. Um, I am the uh, Vice President of the North Hills West Neighborhood Council and the Executive Director of Safer Streets LA. I'm also the person who got rid of the red light cameras here in Los Angeles. Uh, saved the city, uh, people of the city over $200 million doing that. I also got word today that we just stopped another bill that would have expanded automated enforcement in the state. So we, as I'm running for office, we're also doing a lot of good things for the people of the state of California. Um, I, I just wanted to stop by uh, to thank the board for uh, uh, putting on the uh, forum that we had a week or so ago. That was a really awesome event. Thank you so much. I want to congratulate Susan for her well-deserved recognition and the work that she has done. And that is the example of when the community gets involved in things, um, you can actually make a huge, huge difference. And that's why I'm running for city council, which is to give a voice and to help give a voice to the people of this uh, district and also of the city. Uh, for far too long, the um, city council has embarked on, on policies and programs that have essentially ignored the hardworking taxpayers of this district and of the city. Uh, they, they follow policies that are just nonsensical. And unfortunately, we have a lot of people who are running for this seat who are sort of the same old, same old people over and over and over again. Um, we need a new voice. We need a new direction in the city of Los Angeles. If you want something different, you have to vote for somebody different. And if you like the status quo, there's plenty of people in this race to vote for. Um, I'm not one of them. I'm different. Uh, I have a track record of making uh, effective change, but I did done it as an effective advocate for the people of the city and of the state. Um, and I'd love to do that as your representative for LA City Council. So thank you so much. Uh, can I just mention, I have a uh, meet and greet um, on Saturday, May 11th, over at the Starbucks at 1959 Rinaldi Street. Um, where there's some flyers over here on the table. So thank you very much. Uh, I have one to Glenn, did you want to make something in public comment? I have a few more things now. Not budget advocate issues, right? Can you throw on the toilet? Oh, yeah, that's the time. So, Glenn Bailey wearing a different hat. Um, let's see. Most of these is about for regarding the Valley Alliance and neighborhood council. And if Judith Daniels has already covered any of these, she'll say, don't, because I haven't been here for a few months. So, first of all, I want to third everything said about Susan for all the great things that she does, that I see her outside of Porter Ranch as various things. And she's an inspiration. Yeah. Um, Valley Alliance Neighbor Councils, 34 neighbor councils. I want to thank everyone who attended the mixer uh, in March. Sorry, I haven't been here for a while. Uh, if that didn't get communicated to you, um, just want to sh say we are aware of the deficiencies in the sound system. And for our next event, which I'm going to talk about in a second, um, we're having the Department of Water and Power provide the sound system. So hopefully, at least we'll know it'll have power, but hopefully it'll um, resolve the problem so that everyone, no matter where you are in the facility, you can hear this. Actually, this is a great sound system, too. Um, and so that is, our next event is the, is uh, right now in the works to be a planning forum. Um, this is something we generally do every two years. It's usually time based on the newly elected, the election cycles and a number of new board members. And we generally have a panel presentation and then breakout sessions on topical planning issues. So that's the second Thursday of November. Please put it on your calendar. It'll be at CBS Studios. Um, we're not going to be asking you for money on this one. Oh, for, I didn't thank you for contributing to the mixer. Thank you. Um, 
because it looks like Department of Water and Power is going to pay for the whole thing. But don't close your checkbooks because it's possible we may need to ask for it a little bit. So, um, and then just a reminder that our bank monthly meetings are the second Thursday of the month at the Sherman Oaks Hospital. And Susan Gorman Chang has been uh, attending very regularly. So one of the ta one of the asks that I have that uh, Judy has is that you please find and you can take turns. That's fine. But we really, really need to have a representative from Porter Ranch in attendance to the meetings and dialogue with us and make sure if there's issues that you're aware of that need to be on the agenda. So that's a, 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 an ask, okay? And one of the things that I do for the bank is I prepare a list of um, new council files and we hand out, copy, hand out copies each of the meetings and they are now posted on the Alliance webpage that we have through Lang. I'm bringing a copy of last month's because I don't have, next month's is tomorrow. I mean, this month is tomorrow and it's not done yet, but here's last month's, I'm gonna give it to some, and um, that's it, thank you very much. Okay, it's online and the link is on the top of the sheet. You can get that, each one will be posted. Thanks. Thank you, Justin. Uh, Rob? Hello, I'm Robert Grant and I work with uh, the Fence Line, the Argo Science Fence Line, and I'd like to, we just got a new one back online. The website's running again. And um, it's a different machine. It's been, uh, they've been letting us use it for free, and the good thing about it is it, it's, it's a better machine. It measures ethane and methane, and the guy who installs it lives in Santa Clarita, and, and another person in that company lives right, right close to here, and it's a, the company's based in Ventura, so it's very easy to get people to, to help. And um, it's, it's up right now, and we're going to get it. The wind and the, the wind direction is not set up yet, but we're going to get that up soon. So it, it was up, I think, yesterday. We've been testing it for the last week. It's down for a couple months if we wanted to switch it out, and we had problems with how it worked, and we made them change it, so it's, it's all up and good. <coughs> so I just want to know the, the website slide. Thanks. Rob? Yep. Isn't the, isn't the monitoring system, doesn't it do C1 through C5 propane as well? We had to reconfigure condense it because the, the, the path that we have is not long enough. When it, it's, if we deploy it for real along the path, it could do C1 through C5. But there's not enough distance to C3, 4, and 5 right now. Got it. But the good thing is that ethane <coughs> and methane have ratios, and so the, the landfill over the, over the other side with a different ratio of that thing to methane than a solicit or the normal stuff. So it's just one more tool and, and help you see what, where stuff comes from. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask you? Where, where's it located at approximately? I mean, what it's near Highlands. We don't want to tell exactly that where it is. That's fine. It's right. near where it used to be. And it's, gotcha. it's, right, it's close to the uh, edge of the property. Gotcha. All right, thank you. That concludes the public. Ron. All right. Thank you, thank you, board, for all you're doing. Uh, my name is Ron I just had a couple of quick ones. Uh, I noticed that on Cezanon, between Tampa and the Renaissance community, the Highlands, some of the Highlands homeowners are butchering those sycamore, the London plane trees. Uh, and I worked very hard to get the trees planted on the south side. Two homeowners, one, ho one of the homeowners just butchered three, tr three of those trees, knocked it down a little lollipop. And another homeowner further down toward Tampa did the same thing earlier. And I just hope that this does not become a, a, a regular thing with all the homeowners along Cessna because here we had a beautiful tree lined street and they just butchered four trees. The ones on the sidewalk? On the sidewalk, yes. I, I don't believe they ever got a permit because they called the city of Auburn and said they didn't, they, nobody applied for any kind of a tree trimming permit. They're city trees, right? They're city trees, yes. Uh -huh. uh, and one, just one other quick thing. On the traffic at the beginning of Englander's turn, I requested left turn arrows on Corbin at Plummer, Nordoff, and Parthenia, and then going eastbound on a Plummer at Reseda, especially turned down during rush hour. It's horrible there. I was told directly by uh, Council Member Englander that he doesn't want to support that because if it's not already there, he doesn't want to get sued. He can get sued for overriding the uh, Department of Transportation. Now, when I called the office, Ferruzman's office said 
that he never heard that. Uh, and me and two other homeowners now have got approval to do a left turn arrow heading down south on Corbin, left on Parthenia. But it's been approved now, in spite of the council office. I wish they would support us. Uh, and there, it's unfunded. So that could mean that we never get that. But I hope the current council office will support this. I know Greg Smith was much more open to this. We need to move traffic safely and efficiently, and we're not doing it. We're creating more smog, and if you see the people going down south on Corbin, they cut through the Brent's parking lot. I've seen near uh, accidents because of that, so I appreciate your support. Thank you. Any other public comments? All right, let's try to uh, move on. Uh, Board member comments, and I'm going to ask for a one minute comment, and if that's difficult, I apologize. So, uh, let's do it. You want to start? No? Do it alphabetically, please. Yes. <laughs> yeah. My last name or first name? Second letter of the last name. <laughs> Oh, I'll keep this real short. First, uh, Susan, we're going to really miss you. We learned a lot from you. I thought I was the solemn expert, but I learned more from us solemn from you than I knew. Uh, for the safety committee, uh, we had a good participation uh, with the LAPD uh, pancake uh, event. Maron was there, David, myself, Jason, and uh, it was a, a good experience to share with the public what's going on and in a, indirectly promote what the PRIC is all about. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> all right. Thank you. Next person is David Bailey. I too want to say, Susan, it's been a true pleasure. Um, you know, starting out with sustainability, <coughs> more than I had in a long time. When it comes to sustainability, um, it was great. Then I stepped off for, so thank you. And we uh, moved on to the homelessness um, in Port Ranch. And, you know, Susan and I worked together. You know, we got to know homeless people by names. We went down into the encampments and we got to know the people. We tried to help them. Um, it's been a great journey with you. So I'm truly grateful. Thank you. Um, on uh, land use, we will be uh, having a land use meeting coming up uh, in a week or so, and that'll be uh, it'll be on the agenda coming up. You know, just, so that's enough. Thank, uh, thank you, Gloria. Hi. Um, also, Susan, I wish I had had time to work with you. If you have time for coffee, I'll be going maybe getting some download from you. What what was all all happening since what you said? Um, for, as for as far as outreach, I've been working on the Facebook page, and we're getting a lot of information from that that's, that I've been posting. Um, I'm still working to get access to some of the other things like the, uh, the key to the uh, storage unit, you said, for the giveaways and the uh, even drive, I guess we have the drive. So I need to get access to that so I can see some of the things. And I think so. Hopefully, you're going to be in okay. track this. And well, all right, that's Brandy. 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 Susan, I have some big shoes to fill. <laughs> uh, and it has been a true honor working with you, and from helping to, to put on Earth Day, working with you in sustainability, and helping you get the fence line monitoring stuff through the ad hoc, working closely with you on homelessness, trudging through <laughs> the county side of Porter Ranch, trying to find places in public property for stuff and attending all the West Valley Young Reliance on homelessness, naming it. <laughs> it's been a long journey with you, and it's been a pleasure, and I'm sad that I feel like I'm losing my best friend that you're moving. But I, I wish you well, and we all understand why. Um, moving forward, the West Valley Alliance, on the, the West Valley Neighborhood Alliance on Homelessness will have a, another informational fair on June 1st from 1 to 3 p.m. at the One Generation Senior Enrichment Center in Reseda. Um, and I'm very happy to say that, that they have voted to approve 
They have voted to approve holding a homelessness job fair that I've been meeting at for a while. So we will, in fact, be doing that. Thankfully, Barger's office has said they will work with us. So I'm happy that we're going forward. Thank you. Yeah. And Jason. Chris? Um, so the Adopt the Median project, I uh, printed out the large size, um, took it downtown when I got my card, and uh, met with them. So things are moving along, but I would don't expect an answer for another month or two on that. Um, so that's the good news. We did find water. Our water had been cut when they did the drip irrigation for the Northridge West median. Um, but we know now how to tap into the water, so those issues are resolved. Um, the One of the things that I'd uh, like to see from the outreach committee, I know they're going to have a meeting soon, but I'd like to ask them to think about putting something on our website about our improvement project that we did last year. We did a tremendous tree project, but it's nowhere to be found really on the website prominently. This is something that is we should really be proud of. Um, we got a bank award, that was part of it. Um, I wanted to thank everybody who helped with the candidate forum. It was a tremendous amount of work, but um, especially Murat was running all over town with me, figuring out the microphones and everything. Uh, we don't have microphones, what we have is just PA systems. So uh, we worked it all out. It was a very successful event and everybody stepped up. I'm looking at all you guys. You guys all helped and I could have done it without you, so I thank you. Um, it was a great success. Uh, also, we had a meeting with Scott Schmerlson, um and the principal of Castle Bay. In regards to the issue with the development and where the kids are going to go to school and the school capacities, so it's not like we're not going to have a town hall, but we are going to have a follow-up meeting with Re Rena Perez, um, and then I will bring back to the board what they're proposing there may be some possible boundary changes and things like that okay. and uh, I think that's pretty much it. Alright, thank you. Mara? Uh, first of all, thank you Susan. I think you and I we had to exchange very good ideas and uh, I enjoyed speaking with you. You will be missed. Thank you for giving all the guidelines and uh, mentoring me. I uh, wish you all the best. I am working naturally with the special network on a very high level to create uh, a special foundation and a special program how we are going to work with our special needs and disability kids and they are looking forward to, they are looking forward to working with us. I am also working with Harry Stern office on a civic presentation uh, as well. I am also going to work on an international uh, event. It's me. Alright, uh, first of all I just want to thank the whole board for holding the CD12 Forum. I was very successful. We had a full house, overflow. Uh, the questions everybody submitted were great. The candidates were great, and overall everything was perfect. And then uh, my second and last thing is to Susan. Thank you for everything you've done, Susan. You work. I think one of the hardest people on the board, or any board member I've ever seen. And I believe your hard work will pay off now and in the future. Thank you again. Now yeah. Next person is David Lasser. Try to keep 30 seconds. I've said some other stuff about transportation. Uh, Susan, phenomenal record of success and dedication. I volunteer to carry your suitcases to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. County, with respect to landfill. Yes. Uh, I was in Venice Beach riding my road bike last week and uh, on this almost run over many, many times in the midst of huge signs saying scooters are prohibited on the bike path. I'm concerned that we have the landfill, great, he's got an injunction, what's gonna stop the gentleman any more than we have passage laws and initiatives and he's got a track record of ignoring? Well, the, the, the good news is, with this injunction permanent, we can now use law enforcement. So now I can call the Sheriff's Department and CHP and ask for a blockade. And so, and we have done that in the past. We have done that in the past uh, periodically uh, to trick. But now I can use it a little bit more consistently if he, did, if he decides to run trucks consistently. We can have it permanently stationed there. There are operational ranches that are legit doing work there. So we have to be very judicious to make sure that we're turning around the right trucks. But now we can use law enforcement a little bit a little bit, a little bit looser than we could before because of the injunction. That's, that's the best thing. Thank you. I've seen some follow-up, unlike some other similar, my algae. Thank you. Uh, this is the time for work comment. I want to get into the discussion on the topic. Done. Thank you. All right. 
next. Me? Uh, okay, uh, uh, Susan, I'm going to miss the 5.30 calls, uh, but uh, you, you know what I think of He wasn't you. awake, he was awake, yeah, okay. you, know, you know what I think of you, and, and, and you know what you mean to, to me and what we've done together, so, uh, but uh, congratulations on the move, that's, that's all I would say, so uh, enjoy Hawaii and best of luck to you. And, um, uh, besides that, uh, I'm just trying to run the meeting, so I'm going to keep my mouth quiet and move on. Any information that I get, I'm sending to the board. So you got an email from me today that there is a PUC proceeding uh, meeting happening in about a month, and uh, we will continue with that with you guys' discussion. So that's it. Anybody? All right. Uh, item 11. Item 11 is uh, in response to the request from the LA County Department of Health at the last meeting to designate, uh, to, to nominate two <coughs> members and one alternate to the community advisory group for the health study that the, uh, the county health department will be managing. Um, I did not want to just pick names and put it out, so I'm going to ask uh, a board member to take on the job of an ad hoc committee to work over the next four weeks, come back to the board at the next meeting with a recommendation for the board to vote up or down, or they may choose to bring to the board more than three so we can uh, vote. I don't know how uh, you want to do it. Um, and I've asked uh, around, and uh, you know, uh, nobody stepped up, but 10 out of 11 took a step back, so one person stayed in the front. So, Mehran, uh, I'm going to ask you to take on the ad hoc job of coming to the board with a set of recommendations. Uh, the burden is pretty heavy. There's a lot of work to do. There's a lot of people to talk to. Um, I would just ask you to be careful that we get nominations that this board will support so that we can put it in. The LA County Department of Health needs, they need an answer now. I told them it's not going to happen. So they said we can wait till June, but we cannot wait longer than that. So the meeting is going to have, this is going to have to happen in June. So with that, you good with that? All right, thank you. Is there an application or something like that for this or no? No, I'm just asking him to chair it and I'll ask him to, uh, you know, talk to board members, talk to members of the public, pull a group together, huddle, come with a nomination and come back and uh, just be, be aware of all the conflict of interest issues. I encourage you to talk to the city attorney's office on anything that comes up on this. Consult them whether you think it's a conflict or not. If it smells a conflict, call her and talk to her. Let her advise you. Uh, we, we don't want to mire this in any problems. Good. Question. Yes. Two members and alternate can be anybody from the stakeholders, right? Uh, it's, it doesn't even have to be stakeholders. It is people that are representing, that the PRC recommend to represent the community. They could be from outside the community. They could be uh, anybody. I would I would prefer it not to be a board member, but I can't. No one can prevent that. So it's it's. Uh, I'm putting it in the hands of the ad hoc committee. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, item twelve. Uh, you know, I thought it was presented to me before the meeting, and I want to run it by the board. Uh, since we are only nine here now, uh, and at the next meeting we're looking to uh, bring on a, a new board member, hopefully. Uh, whether the board would agree to the idea of tabling that item until the next meeting so we have a full board to, uh, to, to vote on a vice president. Uh, but I'd like to get a sense from the board if there's a uh, Interesting table in the motion. Table in the item. Well, I don't even know if bringing on a <coughs> new member, can that member vote? Sure. Do you believe you will vote on that issue? Or she? 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, Lori and Aran voted on all the executive officers when we had the election last time. Comment? Yeah, I, I, I think it's a good idea because uh, I wouldn't want somebody to come in for some reason doesn't like the choice we made and it feels like they were cheated out of a chance to have a say. I think you I concur with Brian. Any objection? Yeah, All right, so without objection, then we'll table this motion for the next Thank you. Look at you saving time. Like <laughs> yeah. Wow, we just jumped. <laughs> All right, so with that, we yeah, are schedule now. deserving of it. Not, I don't think so at all. Um, let's take a, uh, well, 10 minutes. Pretty break. Board members. David and Brandy, would you please come to the meeting? Sorry. I'm 13. Francis, ready for us? Thank you. We have a motion. Jason. Yes. You want to read the motion? Yes, please. Okay, motion to redistribute the remaining PRNC budget for this fiscal year to address the shift in expenditures to date as required by the city clerk's office. So did everybody get one of these? Yes. Okay, good. So these are the updated figures which are they out on the table too? Yes. I'll put the copies out there. Right there. So these are um, the best estimates I have of what we're going to be spending at the end of this fiscal year. Um, on the first page, uh, yeah, I, I added like 2000 for the retreat because that actually all goes under food. And on the second page, I have, it says outreach expense six, seven, and eight. Those are potential items that could be approved. Can you explain to the board what we're doing here and why? Okay, yeah. Um, so we approved the administrative packet already, which are these figures here, but those are only projections. So now that we're almost done with the fiscal year, they want us to revise this packet. And that's the budget templates that you're referring to. David, is, is this uh, packet, the administrative packet, which is what we vote on at the retreat. So I went through every single transaction that we've done this fiscal year and put them all into the different categories and fit it all and revise these numbers. So these numbers are just roughly what I would expect that we're going to be spending. So the first page, office expenditures, uh, food and storage, printing, um, some of those were adjusted up and down depending on what the actual cost was. The second page are outreach expenditures. Um, keep in mind, you know, some things are called outreach, but you know, they're not necessarily, that's just the way that they categorize it. So like bank, that's an event that we support, that's outreach. The band for the holiday party was considered outreach. Um, the birthday cleanup was out, your candidate form. Um, so there's basically other six, seven, and eight or other potential items that are on the agenda, like um, the, the event for education, that could be considered outreach as well. So if we approve those, those will go under here. So if I, it's hard to say exactly what's going to get approved. So I'm just kind of projecting. Uh, elections, we were under budget because we didn't have to spend only $35 because we didn't actually have to have the election. Um, the next page, community improvement projects, we budgeted $10,000, but I just uh, kind of adjusted it to make the numbers work. So they all have to total $42,000 at the end. Uh, neighborhood purpose grants, so far we're at $9,500. And then I put MPG number five, which we may or may not approve, for $500. And um, then everything totals out on the bottom. And, and to, to clarify the, the criticality of this is, if we have an item <laughs> that we're submitting for payment 
and the line item of that category is already exceeded based on what we budgeted, the city clerk will kick it back. So we have to reshuffle money to make room for it on that line item so it gets approved. That's why we have to reshuffle money. Okay. Um, I have a motion for this distribution. Can I get a second? I'll second it. Okay, we have a live motion on the floor. Public comment on the motion. Okay, board comment. No board comment, call the vote. All right, Brandy. Yeah. Yeah. David Malin? Yes. Jason? Yes. Mira? Yes. Becky Zapson, David Lasher? Yes. Glory? Yes. Assad? Yes. Gabriel, yes. You saw? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. Uh, without objection, before I move, I wanted to mention, obviously, you've seen the announcement, but um, I wanted to put the announcement out that we're opening the position, the seat on the board. And it's been out in the last because we want to give it 30 days and we want to be able to have in the applications before we agendize the next meeting. So that's why it went out. So uh, please talk to your neighbors, talk to stakeholders, anybody. We're going to keep putting it on the e-blast until the time it is due. And I picked that Friday at night so we can get it on the agenda in time. What's the date? It will be down. No. It's in the e-blast. I don't remember the date. Right, and I think we have two people currently running for C12 or for the branch members, or branch uh, neighbors. So, Manny Cho and, and John Lee, and if things don't go your way, you consider joining. I'd, I'd like to see if things don't go their way, what am I doing? Well, I mean, that's why I'm asking the date. I don't remember. Yeah, I, I don't remember. It's something else. All right, sorry. Item 14. Um, this is an MPG application that came through the CD12 office in support of the uh, YMCA uh, senior dance. And um, it's for $500, and we've supported the senior dance before. And also, the CD12 office, uh, like they did in the past years, asked for our nomination for the senior in the community to be recognized at the event. And so, um, I am suggesting that we uh, ask the uh, outreach committee to come up with that nomination and that we approve an MPG, the MPG application that is in place. So that is uh, that is my motion. Yes. Uh, by May 15th. I second. So you have a week. Thank you. <coughs> Got a motion on the second. 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 Any public comment on this? All right. Any board comment? Well, he, he took his breath to start talking, yeah. so I'll let him talk. Go ahead, David. So my question I have is. Once again, um, where where are they holding the senior dance? Is it going to be is it in our is it in our community? Is it not in our community? Um, how many of our community members end up going to this uh, event? Do uh, you know how many how many of our members? I have no idea. Oh, at Northridge Park. At Northridge Park. I get it. So I'm saying once again, how many of our I don't know, David. I don't think anybody has that statistic. Sure, Tony. Um, so last year, there were about 250, 200 to 250 people late in a better turnout. And because the North Valley YMCA was the fiscal sponsor for the first time, before that had been other fiscal mm -hmm. sponsors, um, and, and, and Jane was very enthusiastic about it. She said she'd be promoting it. I think I agree. No one really knows where they came from, but I think that this time, because they're doing it for the second time, they'll probably really be promoting it through through the North Valley YMCA as well as you know the other senior centers that promote it. 
But the other thing is that when you uh, become a sponsor, you can promote it and encourage your stakeholders who are seniors to attend. That's my recommendation. All right, but we have our we have the community right down below. And I, I don't know if there was any outreach to that community um, to even attend last year. So you can do you can provide that outreach. And what I'm saying is, right. I, I'm confident after speaking with Jane last time that she'll be doing outreach that wasn't done before. So I think between those two, but there was no sign-in, so no one has a zip code or there was no sign-in. So there's really no way to where people came. Okay, Brandy. Um, I have a couple questions since, since it's not explicitly saying anything. There's, there's no ticket. You don't have to pay for it to go right. over. Right? And then, uh, is there is there any issue like if, if someone who does not qualify as a senior wants to go, but it's still public, will they allow them? I mean, there's no one here speaking from it. I don't know. I just want to make sure we're all in the legal. No one wants to do this. I, I can say I, I've been to a number of them, and I probably wasn't considered a senior. I don't know what they're, they, I don't know, maybe 55 is their cutoff, I don't really know. But yes, they will, they let you in. Um, so it's, it's designed for seniors. If you were young and you want to hang out with seniors, you know, they'd love to have you as a dance partner. <laughs> they're always welcome. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other questions, comments? Yeah, it says that we can have a booth there. Oh. And is there any board members who are willing to man that booth? We do that. What uh, day? This is booth. This is the booth. Yeah, for, for this event? For, that, for this event. I, I would do the booth. And are we comfortable with nominating the senior? Like, I don't know how we know who's senior. Well, I was planning to go to the well, I think the board has to come up with the well, outreach committee has to come up with our suggestion. That's what I'm saying. We have to go on the outreach committee. So I have to go there and figure out, figure out how to find the suggestion. Uh, you know, we probably the there. So I can find it. I can find it. I can find it. I can find it. My question is why is the Council office setting this MPG. Don't the MPGs usually come from the organization themselves? Why wouldn't Why wouldn't this come from the Y? That's uh, what I'm, I'm again, about. the MPG is from the Y. In this packet, it is filled out by the Y. See, the council's office simply sent a, the MPG to the neighborhood councils in the C12 area, and is asking them to support the MPG. We can choose to look at the MPG and decide not to, or to agree. That's all. Yeah. Well, I love the why, and I support Jane. I love working with Jane. Right. Um, I just don't, it seems off that they're sending, that the councilman is sending us the MPG. It would make more sense to come from the why. Jane knows this correctly, so. Because we've always, we've always worked with her. But I understand that's how it came. It's nothing against you. Glenn, yes. I'm sorry. Please. Uh, you see, I'm the um, YMCA the member, so I know how, uh, how they run the, the YMCA. Uh, you see, uh, uh, not only the babies, not only like the exercises we need, you see a lot of things, especially for the young generation. They make a lot of different kind of the activity for the young people, also for the seniors. You can do one day you have time to visit them. I was so surprised I talked with the gym because at that time I really want to become a volunteer to help the YMCA. And then the um, gym did the director then said most of the fund is donation from um, raising fund. There are about 200 people. And then they really did a great job. That is, a, you see, the all very, um, I think the, they put a lot of time and effort for the next generation and see. Uh, I you. really appreciate the effort. Glenn, you want to add something? Yes. Um, do you want me to use the mic? Or? Sure.
So this event has been going on for many years before I joined Neighbor Council uh, seven years ago. Um, it is in conjunction with the Salute to Recreation event, that's the weekend event at the park that draws tens of thousands of people. This is the Friday night before. The Salute to Recreation actually kicks off the weekend. Because Recreation and Parks is so involved with that event, they kind of, I, I, and this is before my time, but C12 sort of took on the responsibility to sort of like just handle this because they're so busy with Salute to Recreation. So CD12 staff is actually there serving the food along with the Boy Scouts, you know, the volunteers, um, doing the work to coordinate it and to try to raise the money for the budget. So if you approve it, I think you will be the fourth neighbor council. Um, Chatsworth has approved it, Northridge East approved it, North Hills West has approved it. North Hills West, uh, Northridge West is considering it next Tuesday, and I don't know about Granada Hill South. So basically they need five or six neighbor councils to help fund for, for the food the event. Historically, as far as the money, um, again, before my time, but it, for many years the Northridge Kiwanis Foundation was the fiscal sponsor. It was a pass-through. Nobody makes money off this. If anything, they might lose some, but CD12 probably makes up the difference. Uh, three years ago, the Valley Relics Museum became the fiscal, uh, fiscal sponsor for two years. And then last year, North Valley YMCA uh, came in. And it ju it's just a pass-through. It's a way that they can work with CD12 to get the money because of the city's city clerk and the funding and neighbor councils to be able to do the neighbor purposes grant, to pull together from different sources, and, and or, you know, get the checks, cast the checks, pay the bills, and so right now they're the group that stepped up to this. It happens this year and last year to have been North Valley YMCA, but it's been other groups in the past. Thank you. Thank you. I have what I hope is a very silly question. Um, since YMCA is the one asking for this, just to make sure there's no problem whatsoever with the fact that the YMCA stands for Young Men's Christian Association, right? There's no like issue with the fact that it has a religious thing. The fact that it's just declared 501c3 is all we need? All right. Okay, just make sure. So okay. is that the YMCA's 501c3, the Young Men's Christian? Yes. Yeah, so no, I saw that, but yeah. I'm saying is that, so that's their 501c3? I think they use like the whole Yeah, this says LA. Young Men's Christian Association of Metropolitan Los Angeles. I'm guessing that's their whole name. All right, so, uh, yeah, motion and a second. Any public comment? Beyond what we had. Board gave their comments. Any more comments? All right. Will please call the vote. Brian Brandy? Yeah. David Valen? Yes. Jason? Yes. Miran? Yes. Becky Zapson? David Lasher? Yes. Lori? Yes. Assad? Yes. Gabriel? Yes. Isam? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. Item 15. Lori? Uh, motion to approve up to about $2,500 in funding for the CRNC retreat. Oh, thank you. Oh, the Board of Rent Control Fund. Thank you. 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 Um, I think that we can do. This is just up. What? This is up. Yeah, I understand. Okay. Um, I think that we can do. If you want to conserve money, it may be a little more. But like, for example, the food we got here, about 350 bucks. We could get even more for about 500 bucks. We could use the school for free. Um, so. If you want to look to do this event in another way, um, personally, my opinion on the the country club, I've been very disappointed in the way they've been maintaining their grounds. You know, I am the chair of the beautification committee, and they've allowed their weeds to be three, four feet tall, way beyond the deadline, and I find it. I'm a little bit concerned about supporting 
or giving the business when they're not taking care of like the homeowners do. If you, and the HOAs, for example, do a great job maintaining up to the curve. So that's that's my two cents. Okay. Other board members? David? No? I, I would tend to agree with Jason. I think we could also um, possibly even use um, Mediterranean Bistro if, you know, in the morning um, I could reach out to Michelle. So I kind of agree with Jason that we should kind of boycott um, that establishment unless we can find another facility. Um, okay. What did we vote on at the last meeting about this? Did we decide on the location at the last meeting? No. no. Okay. Because we could leave the motion open to the outreach committee because I'd like to see the outreach committee and look at alternatives uh, that, that are, you know, we're running low on. I know we're running out of time, but it's not that hard. But we can get the school and the food. This, motion, the this motion is two parts. One is funding, one is location. If you want to ask for an amendment to remove the location, you can ask for that amendment. Yes. Of the office. Yes, I think that um, we should consider alternative locations for the reasons described, cost, and also... Do we have right. you think at the school? Right here. This is right here. But, no, just, but let me let me let me let me say something. First of all, we have two people that commented on it. Nobody else has said something yet, so I'd like to hear the other board. Yes. I'd like to for Okay. Any other board members? Any other comments? Comments? I think it's good to consider the alternative location as well. Just just so that everybody knows, um, we need to agendize. This issue, if it goes into any location that is outside this room, anything that we have to pay for, that we need a contract for, it's off. It's off June because we have to agendize it for a contract approval from the city clerk's office. So that's why we brought it here so that we can get the contract in place. But so the contract for, okay, for example, <coughs> the school we're fine, but you're saying if we have this school is fine. Castle Bay, no. Okay. We have a month. We could potentially get it through. If, well, we, we have this school here, but you're saying a contract with, like, the country club or with another out? Is that what you mean by contract? Or you need the third, like, for the city clerk's paperwork? Are you talking about that paperwork? The event approval form? Is that what you're talking about? Or are you no. talking about the contract? It's a contract to use a facility. The permitting contract. The, the permitting contract. Okay. That would only be if we use Castle Bay. If we use Castleton, or if we use any facility that is other than this school. Yeah, I don't think we would really be looking at this place. This school has an event in the next motion, motion 16. And item 16, the school has an event June 5th or June 10th. Yeah, so? I thought we were doing it the 9th. 8th. Oh, 8th, yeah. Eight. I mean, so if they're having an event, are we going to have our event for that? Listen, but it's a good idea. I, I, I love don't, it. I don't. I'm just. More, I'm just making everybody understand that uh, we are basically nixing any option other than the school if we take on this amendment. Go ahead. I'm. I'm not against if we end up at the country club, but I think if we found something that we all like better, I wouldn't have a problem doing a, a special meeting. To time to get the contract as long as it's done. As long as the alternative is explored very quickly. You know, okay, I, I appreciate that, but you know, we should have this kind of feedback when we talk about these things, not wait till the meeting to happen. I mean, at the last meeting we brought up the, the idea that we're gonna hold it at the at the country club. Uh, we told her to go ahead and talk to them and nobody said anything. And here we are now in the meeting that we're trying to approve everything. Now everything's saying, uh, wait a minute, this is a problem. Everybody has the right to do that. We should know that we should do it this way. Okay. So, so it's important to have the right to make changes. So we can put in the motion with the location to be determined. How each committee can take that on. If they find an alternate location, if the school works out, great. If it doesn't work out, Country Club, 
and the motion is for whatever the dollar amount is. That's all. But does we still have to vote on where the location is? No, we don't because you just like just like with the candidate forum, it was the location to be determined and the date to be determined. That's not the way the city council has explained it to us. You can do that with the city council. That's fine. The, the one different, I, I know to do a contract, to LA Unified, I know there's some lead time there. But as far as anywhere else, uh, retreats are just like a meeting. You prepare an agenda and you go through ENS, and they're not subject to the event. That's not, the, that's not the issue. I, I, I'm just saying that if you did do it at the restaurant that was mentioned, if you did something like that, then where there was no contract, there was no event, you just do your event. No, according to city clerk, if I am taking the board and stakeholders to a meeting at a private facility, then I need to get liability insurance signature from the city clerk and the facility under a contract. They're crazy. If you have an event, that if, you, if you have a... I can't hear you. They're crazy. Well, that's yeah, but they're, that's they're our crazy. So, if, but we're not if, it's a, if it's a Brown Act meeting, it's not an event. And the retreat is a Brown Act meeting, and so I'm very 100% confident of this. Um, that At the country club, we're getting served by a country club. That's a contract. Okay. We, have, we, have, we have a proposal for them with a contract for the use of the facility. You have to sign it. Yep. That's, yes. that's where okay. it is. But so it would be a lot easier to have it at the school because we won't have to go through that. We, uh, I believe Maran checked on the date. The date is available. It's on a okay. Saturday. And then we order the food. And it's a done deal. Yes. Well, uh, like Glenn just pointed out, for a meeting is different. I mean, we've had committee meetings that are brown acted just almost spur of the moment uh, as far as the facilities are concerned at like Starbucks and fillers. And we didn't have to do any kind of contract thing. So same with when we, we buy the food, we ought to do that a couple days ahead of the thing. We didn't have to put in anything. The reason the contract comes into play is because the country club has a contract that they want us to sign. Right. That's I'm talking why. about like if we went to a restaurant or something. Why is that different than when we do it at the Starbucks or the Philippines? Because they don't make a sign a contract to use yeah. the facility. Right, exactly. The the country club, the, the country, country club, is that's their way of well, business. Well, I'll send it. Yeah. You wouldn't have to. If the venue doesn't require a contract, then the, the only reason there's a contract involved is because the country club has a contract for us to sign. I remember I did it last year. That's why I thought we were going to So if you, if you want to have the country club, then you have the country club and sign a contract. Want to have it at the school, and then so you just book the dates, order the food, buy whatever else you want to get, tablecloths or whatever else. The problem with the Okay, so. Uh, you want to amend the motion to remove the location? I can amend the motion to remove the location and then approve up to, the motion is now to approve up to $2,500 in funding for the event. For the Any suggestion for the amendment as to what language to use with, about the location? With the location to be determined. With the location to be determined. By whom and by when? the outreach committee. By the outreach committee. So we are authorizing the outreach committee to pick a location and without objection from the board. Correct. All right, so we're amending the motion, if I may. An, uh, an alternative location. An alternative location. Correct. Do we have to say alternative? Why would you use the word alternative? They would determine, the outreach committee is going to determine the location. So we're going to what if the outreach out. committee came back and said, that's where it's going to be? Then that's where it's going to be. Then that's where it's going to be. Yes. We're putting the, we're, we're giving right. you I'm a second right. option. So we're saying, check out the school if it works for you guys. Let's do it. If not, you can fall back on the country. Board. And, uh, okay, the city clerk asked me to make sure that the board approved the location, so uh, hopefully this motion will work towards that end. So uh, we're asking then for the motion to say the motion to approve up to $2,500 for funding for the PNC retreat 
to be held at a location at the choice of the outreach committee. Or we could, we could if the city clerk told you they want a definite location. Is that what they told you? Uh, Except it was because of the contract, so I'm okay. going to drop that. Okay, yeah. All right. So that's so. fine. That's fine. Did you get that, Francis? Yes. Okay, you comfortable with that motion? Yes. All right, can I have a second? I'll second the motion. I'll second the motion. All right, can we, any comments on the amended motion? All right, can I have a vote on the amended yes. motion? Yes. Uh, Brandy? Yes. Uh, David? Haley? Yes. Jason? Yes. Mira? Yes. Becky Dapson, David Lasher? Yes. Lori? Yes. Assad? Yes. Gabriel, yes. Isam? Yes. And motion passes. Thank you. Item 16. Motion to approve. Oh, sorry. Clear on. Uh, item 16. Motion to approve funding of up to 1700 and to authorize the PRNC to co sponsor with LAUSD the school board members, Scott Jonathan, and teachers' appreciation at PRCS. Uh, Can you quickly tell us about this? This is a special event going to happen uh, where Scott's office is going to come with his team. We are going to do an event probably from 11 to 1.30. Uh, and we are going to make a special agenda to show our special appreciation to the teachers. Uh, there will be music and there will be also food training. So the Education Committee is taking the charge on representing the PRC at this event? 100%. Okay. We have a motion. Can I have a second? I'll second it. JC seconded? Yes. Hector. Public comment? Public comment? Yes. Uh, so the total event of the cost is covered by the PRNC, no other contributions. What was the question? Anybody else putting money with the RNC or only us putting the money? For now, it's only us. As soon as approved, I will be talking to Scott's office. And do you have then an idea how much money you need beyond the 17? No. Okay. Thank you. David. Yeah, so I mean, it's a great idea. And maybe we should table this for next year because this week is Teacher Appreciation Week. Excuse myself, yeah, well, I can do that. <laughs> I'm just asking. It's your call. Get out of here. <laughs> what do you think? Well, I, just, I, I guess I should recuse myself. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Rewind. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think about that. Um, my question oh, my comments still say it. Any other uh, PRS, PRCS parent here? Oh, you too? Yeah. I was hesitant. It was my back and forth. There you go. Glasses. Anybody else? <laughs> All right. So, any comment? Um, you know, I want to. I want to commend Miran for the taking this on. You know, I think it's a great idea. Um, we talked about it in the committee, and he's set up meetings with, he's been talking to Scott Schmerlson personally, he's been talking to Avak, the vice principal at um, PRCS. Uh, they're very excited. The plan was to do something like this at the next, next fiscal, fiscal year for Castle Bay. And um, I think it's, it would be a great to have the school kind of do a video showing all the accomplishments throughout the year. It's towards the end of the school year, so um, that was the thought. You know, they could have them enjoy food and music and also um, see what they've accomplished throughout the year, as well as perhaps the PTA could select some awards, because we can't really give awards, but perhaps the school could decide to give awards or something like that. So that's kind of the vision that, that I had for it. But um, Miran is working with the VOC, and I'm confident in you know what they're doing. I don't expect the food to be a thousand dollars, but we're just kind of you know putting an up to amount on the event. Um, 
as we get closer to it, we probably have a better idea of what the actual cost. You know, I don't expect the retreat to cost twenty five hundred either. You know, so we'll just have. To, but at least okay. there's a cushion. All right. Um, when will this happen? June tenth. June fifth or tenth. It's June fifth or June tenth. Where is that? It's in the description. In the description. The description. Okay. And the school will still be in session. Hundred percent. I already reached out to them. I've been working very closely okay. with them. I had very constructive meetings with them. This is one of the events they are looking for. Okay, right. Well, right. I'm sorry. Uh, <coughs> just to address the question that was now never asked, um, <coughs> while this week is Teacher Appreciation Week, partly because we wanted to do one for PRCS and a separate one for Castle Bay, also because it came up faster than we could do. I, I think we can appreciate teachers more than one week in a year. I think that's okay. <laughs> I was just going to ask the same uh, similar question in that, in that also, is this going to be then just for the PRCS team? This event. This event is course. only for them. The next one we are talking about. The next way is going to be for Castle Bay on a different uh, Yeah, since this is the end of the year, we were doing this one here, and we were thinking maybe the end of uh, like winter break for Castle Bay. So you do it right at the beginning, nobody's had enough time to appreciate the teachers. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, at least a semester or something. Uh, so people understand, it, it's going to be held during school hours because that's when the teachers are there. Right. right. And you're not going to hold like an event, let's say, at the country club for the teachers at both schools. It just doesn't make sense. So the way that you would do it that makes sense is to hold it at the school during school hours. Right. You know, and then the the staff will work out how the teachers are all going to make it. Like. That can be the challenge. Any other question, comment? So is it open to the public? It's open right. to the public. Yes. So the parents of non-PRNC students? It's open to the public. It's very good, yes. Anyone who wants to come appreciate it. Everyone who appreciate it. Everyone, they show their engagement and their respect they need to show up. Okay. All right. Um, since Gabriel's out, could you please call the vote for him? All right. Brandy. Yes. Uh, Jason. Uh, yes. Maron. Yes. David Pasha. Yes. Ori. Yes. Saad. Yes. Uh, Isa. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. 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 Uh, hold on, hold on. The next one is BRCS too. Oh yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> they're on. Freeze out there It's not that cool. <laughs> the rest of them, there's four of them. Yes. Okay, it says no, 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 no. I don't know. We have one now. Menron, please. Go ahead. Item 17, motion to authorize the education committee to set up a booth at the PRC 5K run community fair on June 1st with a budget up to 1,000 for food and refreshments. Um, to give more information, Jason and I have been talking about this event. I reach out to Mary Melvin. We are not going to pay anything for the roof. And she had a very specific items that they want to see us in the event. It's like ice, Gatorade, food, and energy bar. Okay. And uh, I don't believe it would go up to 1,000, but we are just asking. So we have a motion, can I have a second? I second. Lori seconded. Second. Public comment? Ron? The past events of uh, Walmart uh, and the Dr. Jack and Boss and Donald were very uh, helpful. I used to leave Walmart with two flatbeds with beverages and, and other supplies. We will hit that one. Just talk to the general manager yeah. and by his, yeah. six, by his yeah. signature only, yeah. he doesn't have to talk to anybody. I think I was offering you and they have the flat beds all over and I had the fire department in here help me take it from there to the fire station. Ooh. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Board, any other public comment? Board comments? Yes. My same question, which is other parties contributing, you know, at this time. There would be other uh, sponsors. sponsors. Uh, and I said to Mary, I hope we are going to get a very good location. And she said, you don't need to worry about it. I have a very deep respect to your uh, neighborhood council, and they are, they are going to do it a very uh, practical way. 
Well, they're, they're having a community fair component. Last time that was our issue in supporting the run because it's a paid event, but they're doing the run with the community fair portion. So I spoke to Jasmine and that's where we would be giving out the, as long as we're giving out the refreshments at the community fair portion, then we can also give them to the runners. But that would be primarily where we do our outreach okay. at the fair. Any other board comment? All right, all the votes. But I'm sorry. But I just want to add, uh, the other uh, big curator was in and out They gave 100 burgers. I know it's kind of a healthy event. These are the places I've been going, so they, 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 well, you know, you burn them, then you eat them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Paul first said, you never helped us with anything. All right. Call the vote. Ryan. Yes. Uh, Jason. Yes. Meryl. Yes. David Lasher. Yes. Laurie. Yes. Sarge. Yes. Uh, Isa. Yes. Motion passed. All right. And we got those guys. Get the popsicles. <laughs> you sure? I don't know. I think they have another one. No, no, no. no. Oh, well. <laughs> this guy is winning. This guy All right, thank you guys. David, the next motion is yours. It is item 18. <laughs> So we have a motion to authorize Jason Hector to submit an attached CIS on a council file 15-0104-S7 and to authorize the Porter and Steward Council Land Use Committee Chair to speak on behalf of the board on this topic at the Rex and Parks and City Council meetings, which I've already been doing. So there's my motion. Just a second. Okay. You have been speaking, but not on behalf of the board. That's correct. This is authorizing you to be on behalf of the board. That's so, correct. Okay. For Jason. Um, For David. And, yeah, so we I would like to amend. amend the motion because when we write a CIS, we have to choose either in favor, in opposition, or neutral. And so the language should read motion to approve having Jason Hector submit a CIS in opposition to CF 15-0104S7 and to authorize the PRN Land Use Committee chairs, plural, to speak on behalf of the board on this topic of the Rex and Parks and our city council. How many chairs do we have for the Land Use Committee? Two. Jason wants to two of us. Chair, co-chair. And what if the two chairs disagree on what they're going to say? How can we have two people speak on behalf of the board it's and relay a message of the board if they're not one person? It's more like who's available. If if he's if I'm traveling for work, if Jason can step that's, in. That's kind of the way that you know we try and attend meetings is to. For instance, when when we had the. And let's be clear: who's primary, who's secondary. I'm primary, Jason secondary. Is right. that clear in the motions? Not yet. Can we clarify that? Just to be clear so that we're not, I mean, you know, both of you are there, both of you not say the same thing. What does that mean? That's all. Okay. Is that clear? Sure. Okay, uh, what else? Uh, okay, so you want, so, so land use committee chair David Valen, co-chair, Jason Moore, co-chair. Yeah, or using, using, um, you say or talk. land use committee chair, David Valen, or uh, co-chair, Jason Hector, Jason Hector in, in his absence, comma, on behalf of the board. So in your absence, he can speak. Correct. Okay, I got it. Uh, How about <coughs> Francis? Do you want this to walk you through it? Or we can give this to you? I, I, I pretty much have one version oh. of this. Yeah. All right. So you're, you're, you're making the motion to say uh, in opposition and adding the primary or secondary. Anything else? No. This is your amended motion. Correct. Can I have a second on the amended motion? I second. Thank you. Uh, so I made the motion for the second. 
motion? Yes. Okay. Although this was David's, but somebody you should make the motion. Well, well, he made the motion. I amended the motion. Hector. Okay. So. And then. He seconded the amendment, but not the motion. Typically, what we ask, we ask the author of the motion to, to amend it. Okay. But that's fine. Let's do that. That's, that's fine. It. That's fine. Let's do. Okay. So, are you okay with the yeah, amendment? That's fine. Right. So David made the motion. The amended motion. And as I've seconded the amended motion, okay? All right, public comment? <coughs> yes, sir. Well, I just wanted to say that I'm completely in favor of your action today. Uh, the one thing I was very disappointed about was when the president of the commission came to our meeting two months ago and stated that she was told by the council office that there was proper outreach in this community and now realized that that had not happened. And at that meeting, she postponed the uh, Recreation and Parks Board action for two months. So th that, that meeting is coming up very soon. And, uh, and as you know, Council Member Greg Smith introduced a motion without even consulting this neighborhood council and this committee to name it something else. And I thought that was very inappropriate for a acting council member to be doing something like that without proper community support. Another revelation that was made two months ago is the Recreation and Parks Department thought there was proper outreach and went ahead and named the amphitheater without any consultation with this community and with this board. And I also think that's very inappropriate. I think they need to rescind that action and come back here and get community input. I hope this board will support that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? All right, uh, Bailey. Bailey. Okay, that works too. Good. Um, just a suggestion you might, after the council file, just put the brief, you know, several word indication of what the subject matter is. Do the city clerk puts a <laughs> short summary of each of the council motions, and, and it's good. Best if I, practice. I know what is this about. I'm going to ask what Anyone is this who about? looks down the road at your minutes or whatever, I, it's my advice that you not only put the council mm -hmm. file number, but you Oh, you mean like when you write the motion here, put CIS and then write in parentheses, mm -hmm. park naming, et cetera, et cetera? Is that what you're talking about? Exactly. Yeah. I normally do that, but I didn't actually do it here. Yeah, yeah you're right. Thank you for catching that. Okay. No. I'll look it up on mine. <coughs> no. No. Uh, after the CIS number, between parentheses, regarding the naming of the 50 acre park in Port Ranch. I I absolutely respect your, your concern about give, sending mixed signals to people speaking, but I just want to say wouldn't having two speakers who are clearly on the same page give us more time and maybe more... All the board can go speak. That's not the limitation. The limitation is when we are signing to speak on behalf of the board as a body. I just ask that there be a specific person we're signing. Okay, fair enough. Any other board comments? Uh, I'd like to I'd like to make the comment that uh, I will I will support the CIS, but David, as I mentioned to you over the phone in our discussion, I think the language of the CIS is inappropriate. Uh, you know, if you're looking for LA City Council support on what this community needs, we don't need to rub it in their face. Is the way I see it. We don't need to tell them you're out of line. It's not the right message to give to someone who has the authority to blow you off. Uh, so I, I'm, I regret the language of the CIS, but I, I support the intent of it. So what would you suggest to be? What I, suggest, what I suggested to uh, David was that this be stated within the idea that we ask the council to table this motion and to solicit adequate community input on the naming of the park. So we're asking them to table it. We're not telling them it's not your decision. It's a, it's a, it's a difference in... Well, they did the, the community time. input already, so they have the meeting. I'm asking the city council to receive input. So I'm asking the city council, we just want them not to take up the motion. That's all. Because it's going from committee to the to the uh, to the city council, we're asking them to table the motion, and that means the committee chair may just 
not put it up to city council votes. So it's essentially the second paragraph we're talking about. Uh, yes. Okay, so, um, so. I'm not asking you to change anything. I'm just making. No, I'm open to it because I, I kind of agree with you. We spoke about that previously. You know, I, th I don't want to um, come off wrong, but it is true what I, what's being said here. But I, I I respect and agree with what you're saying actually because um, that's just kind of the way my mind works. So when I wrote this, it was like this is not. Um, so, would you, what would you suggest for that second paragraph as an alternative? If keeping, if we keep the first paragraph and we, and we delete the second paragraph, what would you put in replacing it? We, we uh, graciously well, asked for you yeah, that, yeah, this, this Maybe if I may just delete it. No, just spit it out, see how it comes out. Sounds good. Um, what if we say the uh, the PRC asks the council to uh, grant the community uh, a voice on this matter? and uh, allow for community input in front of city council before this motion is considered. Uh, the PRNC is already working with the RAP to address community outreach and to present alternatives to the department. And until that effort is completed, we ask city council to table this motion until there is feedback from the community and wrap to city council on the naming of the spot. Do we want to ask that or do we want to request? Uh, it, it, to me, they mean the same. One is... Well, I know you want to sugarcoat this, so I'm just asking you. Yeah, I, 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 I'm saying we, we ask that you table the motion. So appearance, yes, the city council to grant, what was the community input? Is that what you You know what, the good thing is it's on video. I have no idea what it said. Did you take it, Francis, or not really? I, I, may, I didn't catch word for word for right. word. Yeah, but I, 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 I've got the gist of it, I think. Okay, Ron? Uh, if, we, if we're going to go back and kind of backtrack on this, which I think that's kind of what we're doing now, we need to say that we also request them to follow the city approved guidelines for the naming of the park. Actually, that's a, that's a kinder and gentler way of the second paragraph. Because when we, when we attended the Recreation and Parks meeting in North Hollywood, one of the board members told the staff, you better come back with a plan B because what we heard today says that we are violating our own policy and that you may not get the result that you want at the board meeting. She was calling staff us. Correct. And, uh, and when we got up to speak that one attorney, that he kept interrupting me and everything, and I had to finally silence him and tell him, you are not the commissioner. These are the commissioners. They decide what is to be done. And you have already finished talking, so you need to be quiet. I respect you. You remember how nasty that guy got? But they uh, they received to remind that they need to follow their own city approved guidelines. That's all we're requesting them to do. It's the Rex and Parks approved guidelines. Yeah, but this is not going to Rex and Parks. We are we are asking. And again, Rex and Park told us city council cannot make them uh, pick a name, but clearly the pressure would be enormous on them to object something city council says because next time when the budget cycle comes up right. they will they will feel it. So we just we're asking city council to table it. If we get to me the end justifies mm -hmm. the need in this true. Uh, I just want them to table it. I don't want to antagonize them. I want to tell them you're violating your own <coughs> policy. No, we're not saying you're violent, we're just saying we respectfully request you 
to follow the Orange City policies that have been established. So what do you want to do? Okay, so we will add the second, we will remove the second paragraph of the CIS text, adding the PRNC asked City Council to correct grant community input before the motion is considered. And work with, work while working with Rex and Parks to do outreach and until completed, we ask to table this motion. How about and allow PMC to work with Rex and Parks within the existing guidelines of the park naming process, okay. alluding to the idea that this is kind of outside. I'm going to read it again. I'm going to read it again, and then you interject what you're saying. It's kind of in the middle. I, just remember, I don't remember one thing I say. <laughs> so I'm writing it down. PRC asked City Council to grant the community to grant the community an opportunity to work with Rex and Parks within their existing guidelines within their existing guidelines for a for a park naming process. Okay. Yes. Can we maybe do over the motion that allows Jason to submit an opposition CIS with uh, uh, and allow him to do the wording? Well, we can. Then we but then we can. We're almost done. No, we, yeah, we are. We are, and I and I want this to be yeah. voted on. Yeah. The language needs to be voted on when I submit the CIS. The language needs That's to be voted on and right. approved. So what I have is PRNC asks the city council to grant the community. Uh, the, the Porter Ranch community an opportunity to work with Rex and Parks within their existing guidelines for a park naming process. For naming of the, this 50 acre park. Yeah. Park period. Until this is completed, we ask you to table this motion. Mm -hmm. Patience, everyone. Sounds good. Until this is completed, we um, ask you to table this motion. Period. You can be gutsy and say we ask you to reject this motion or well, table it. Well, it's already, we're already opposing it on the CIS. I understand. So that's what okay. we're taking the position against. All right. Yes, sir. Well, you know, I, I would rather, I, I, I mean, you guys can do what you're going to do, but I would rather say that the council should direct the recreation and parks department to follow the established guidelines. That's what we're saying. To work within recs and parks within their existing guidelines for the naming of this. No, no, the, no but the council is directing them to follow their own guidelines. It says PRNC asks City Council to grant Porter Ranch Jason. Okay. What he's saying is that he believes Rex and Park is going outside their guidelines in the naming. And I frankly don't want to go there because the two commissioners sat here yeah. and they said, you know what, guys? You don't like it, we'll move it for two months. So I don't need to antagonize them either. They're I working think, with us. I think Rex and Parks is the one who stepped in and said, hey, this isn't right. Right. Like, and so. Uh, and so I, I, I'd rather keep that positive posture with them. Okay. So, okay. you have an amended motion on the CIS, yeah. and I have a second on that amended CIS. Second. Randy seconded. Randy seconded. Any further public comment? Board comment? Call the vote, please. All right. Randy? Yes. David Balin? Yes. Jason? Yes. You're on? Yes. Becky Jackson, David Lasher? Yes. Lori? Yes. Assad? Yes. Gabriel? Yes. Isam? Yes. And motion passes. Thank you. Uh, what's next? Item 19. Mehran. Motion to approve up to $1,000 for three classes on first aid, CPR, self defense, and other educational equipment topics. Uh, we had our education at the school committee had a meeting last month 
and to exchange some ideas to create a platform how we can bring enrichment, engagement in our community. And one of them was uh, First Aid and CPR, and we are working very closely with the safety along, so we can make this event uh, successful. And the third event is going to be through the RAPD, and there is additional enrichment that we are also trying to finish it as well. <laughs> Okay, we have a motion. Is right. this a discussion or it's a motion item? So I need a second. I want to discuss I understand, but I just need to I'll get that motion it. live. Oh, yeah, sorry. Randy seconded. Randy seconded. Okay, public comment on it. All right, vote discussion. Go ahead. Uh, I have a few problems with this. As a, you know, I'm a former you know, firefighter in LA County MT. I totally support first aid and actually the certain structure for local government. And actually, book trainings for CPR first aid as part of my current job. Even from the start, you know, most approve up to thousand dollars in funding for free classes, but they're free. Why are we paying for them? I think really it's to provide no cost these trainings. But I don't understand the nexus between first aid and art and drama. If the under benefits it says to provide volunteers with this training to complete required classes, why they're required, and if they're required, why aren't the agencies that are associated with them paying for it? And rather than have them pay approximately hundred dollars per class. A hundred dollars class, a thousand people, that's ten people. And the entire community are gonna fund and CPR costs basically forty-five dollars for first aid CPR and A E training, forty-five ahead. That's about that's twenty people. I, I just I don't see the point of paying hundred you know, ten people to go to this and then you tie in the drama and art. I don't that's my concern. Uh, can I answer so uh, so when we did our cert training uh, well, to answer your question about volunteers, so anybody who wants to volunteer, sometimes they require you to get that training. And when we got our CERT training, one of the things that people kept telling us is now they have to pay like $90 to go to the class. Um, the idea is not that we're going to pay for that class. That's not how it's going to work. What we're going to do is get an instructor, pay the instructor, and then offer the class for free. So the cost is not going to be $100 per person. The idea is to bring, bring us a benefit to the community for that. And the art, we, so we wanted to start with the easiest thing, which we figured would be the first aid and CPR, because we've been, been talking to the YMCA. They're uh, open to holding those classes there. Um, and so we just, if there's money left over, that's where we would get into the other items. And I mean, I, I, I don't see this being intended to be about just safety. This is this is about the idea, just like the, the library does, the public library puts on classes right. of all kinds of topics that are open for the community. Uh, I guess the intent is to That's the vision we have. do a similar service for the community through the PRC support. And it just so happens that the first aid seems to be the easiest thing that we can do because we have contacts and we met people mm -hmm. who do those classes already who are reaching out to to try and get them to hopefully do this for us cheap. And again, the only comment from the city clerk's office was just make sure we get an instructor, right? yeah. a professional person to do it, not, 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 uh, and actually not the, take on the liability of that class. Remember the gentleman who came from Lake Balboa, he has a fellow board member, Jim, uh, Jim James, Brown, Jim James Brown on Lake Balboa Neighborhood Council teaches those <coughs> classes already at the flyaway in Van Nuys. So the idea was to bring something to the North Valley. Uh, yeah, just to give you an idea on the art drama, that type of uh, extended that's not listed, I had already uh, volunteered that I could teach a class and I've been talking to, to people who try to get a computer lab uh, geared toward teens on game development. I can teach a, oh, an afternoon class on that. Uh, so there's, and there's other people we were talking to about doing things like art or, or a week play like a one week play thing for, for kids in the community. So there's, there's lots of ideas, it's just these are the ones that happen to be outlined specifically because we had a more direct path on what we can do for those. Okay. David? Yes. So I love all the ideas, but where my concern comes in is that we're three weeks out from school being let out for summer. And we're gonna be into another year, a uh, whole other year, so. This is not for the school. For adults too. For adults too. This is for everyone. This is for everyone. Where are you going to hold it? Different yeah, places. Different locations. Okay. Considering the public library is one of the things we, we're looking for somewhere we can do it for free. Yeah. So the library we can get for free. Yeah. 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 Y
here we can get for free the why. No doubt there's a lot of questions need to be answered about this. I mean, you have three lines and that's all we have. Yeah. We're just authorizing the funding for the it's process to begin right. to come back with so ideas. We're with working specific. on people's instructors, yeah. we're working on venues, we're reaching yeah. out to people, we're just trying to get this rolling. Yeah. And it was something that you actually, your yeah. suggestion, this is the scope of, out of, of education should be this type of thing. Beyond schools. Yeah. 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 I'm yeah. sure I can counter your vote for this. All right. So once, yeah, yes. once we approve or disapprove this uh, agenda item, they have to come back with the actual date and location and That's actual process, right? Our committee, our education committee, and the one which on the committee, they are, we are engaged. We are working very closely to come up with a comprehensive agenda plan, step by step. This is, it's, it's a very important We're just getting the funding allocated and then go through with the yes. actual project. But, to be, project but, but, but to be clear, this motion basically is approving the budget for these classes. We're not specifically asking you to, to, to come back and do this. So if you want to put that in the motion, let's make sure we put so that in the motion. This way, the money will be this way for the budget. Yeah. That is where it's coming from, yes. Yes. And so, and, and so if, if there's a concern about it needing clarity on coming back for specific classes approval, no, we were, I would suggest you add it. Well, we put in for first aid and CPR because that's kind of what we're targeting first because that's the easiest for us to get an instructor and get set up. And then outreach committee will help to promote this these free classes and we will obviously go back to the board, not for a vote per se, but to let you know this is these are the classes we're gonna do at the library, they're gonna be, you know, right. so so this so, authorizes us to get a But that's not what he's asking. I want to make sure that we have clarity for everybody. Right. I mean, from my perspective, I'd say look, uh, we you know we don't need to micromanage these activities. If the education committee has a good vision that we believe in that vision. We authorize them to proceed, and uh, uh, you know, and if they organize something and they hold it, I don't need to be asked for approving that instructor or that location or that class. Just we're getting the community's work done. Let's just get it done. Yeah, yeah. and they'll work with outreach pretty much, or they'll work with whoever yeah. to yeah. get yeah. the. You know, you know, we do these events; they either succeed or they fail, and it's all because of what we put into them. So, if the education committee works with outreach and they do a bang up job on. On, on outreach, and, you know, everybody okay. did a great job. If we don't, then, well, shame on us. And but come June, we should hopefully have something perfect and tangible. But I guess I'm just being clear. We're not asking them to come back for us for no, any no. approval of the class or an instructor. We're authorizing them to go ahead and organize something. I get the difference between hiring instructor to avoid the hundred dollars per class. So you have one guy you're paying and one person you're paying, and maybe they train thirty people. So right. it's a three thousand dollar value. I get that part of it. I'd like to see the down. I totally appreciate what you're saying, and, and appreciate the distinction as well. It'd be great to focus on things that are really important, like the CPR first aid, especially. I'm afraid that CPR instructor, you still pay twenty dollars to get a car, no matter who you go through. Right. Car association charges twenty dollars per car, yeah, no matter who does. Certificates and things like that. About a thousand dollars. I can support that aspect of it in that respect. Okay, but uh, I don't want to. You know, uh, when you're a hammer, everything's a nail. You yeah. know that saying. Right. Uh, it's not safety is not the only important thing. Art is important to some people too, and there are members in the community who would appreciate. I tell you that, but we're spending. This city spends millions on art and drama courses and enrichment and everything else. The schools do it. There, the YMCA. There are lots of agencies, public and private, that do that. I don't but know. as a diverse group, I think we need to be open to yeah. opening the doors for things. There's a lot of stakeholders that would like to see art classes. So I'm gonna say, I hear it every day at the school. Yeah. I mean, we don't like the fact that safety issues get overlooked and we scream about it. We should also scream about art and dance and music. Yeah. Well, again, we're going to have everything in there. Thank you. Yes. I, yeah, I'll, I'll point out two quick things. One is uh, my son's school is actually holding a meeting in this, this week about the fact that there is no music or art and they wanted to talk about that. But also, like, with respect to the cars, there's plenty of people like me. I don't need a card, but I would like to know if my son gets something stuck in his throat, how do I save him? 
So I would take the first grade and not care about credentials or cards. So it's, it's going to be a mixed bag. Those who might want to pay a little bit more to get something official, and those who just want to know how to save their record. And some of these things may be simply information sessions. Yeah. Maybe about poison control or whatever. something. Something, yeah. All right. We spent enough on this. All right, Randy. Yes. Susan and uh, David Bailey. Yes. Jason. Yes. Aaron. Yes. Becky Zapson, David Lasher. Questions answered, yes. Lori? Yes. Osad? Yes. Gabriel, yes. Isam? Yes. Motion passes. I'm going to speed up things a little bit. Item 20, motion to approve board member reimbursements for a third time $375.40. Jason Hector for the April 13th Earth Day cleanup food and supplies. Motion approved. Okay, just a second. I said that. Mayor Ron seconded the motion. Public comment? Board comment? Call the vote? All right, Randy. Yes. David Bailin. Yes. Jason. Yes. Miran. Yes. Becky Zapsen. David Lasher. Yes. Lori. Yes. Osad. Yes. Gabriel. Yes. Isam. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, Jason, I know you have a presentation. It's like about less than two minutes. It's just the pictures of all the work, the trees. All right, let's do this. Okay. Can you do this? Yes. Thank you. down there and when you walk down uh, you guys are familiar so these are and then this is the one by the uh, below the Y the Corbin entrance and, to right. and then this is where the fire was as you continue down the Corbin entrance here um, this is the northern section on Cessnon and Tampa you'll recognize it when you see the gate there there's just a lot of and then this is the going down the trail starting on the north side walking down the trail. There's just a lot of this. Uh, burnt. Some of it's left over from the Cessnon fire. A lot of these, um, you know, down trees, stuff like that. There's the trail. That's the Lime Kiln Canyon Trail starting from Cessnon, continuing on. Now this is between Porter Ranch Estates. Um, you know where the Verizon? Yeah, there's that path starting from Cessnon where the Verizon um, building is going down. This is along Tampa here. Some of that. Uh, just minor trimming. This is little stuff. See the tree on the left? Needs to be uh, top. That's all part of the little stuff. This is actually uh, across from the lake on Tampa. And then this area right here is on um, the Wilbur Tampa Park. That's the, the horse trail where it continues. So see the ones sticking up there? Those dead ones? Those are left over from the Cessnon fire. So everything is kind of recovered. But these ones sticking up are all dead. They're not coming back, so they need to be taken out. I met with, Rep well, I'll get into it later, but I just, uh, stuff like that. Those ones sticking up. So it's essentially that whole hillside from Wilbur to, let's say, Raymore before you get to Castle Bay. It's that hillside. So the idea behind this project is to kind of uh, reduce the fire, the fire risk in the parks so the, the issue with the parks is the parks won't take out any dead trees unless they're a, a safety hazard. They're blocking a trail. Um, so they will never take this out. They'll just leave it. But you know, from a beautification standpoint and also from you know, a safety standpoint, just having all these dead trees, um, they look bad, it's a fire hazard, but also when you remove those dead trees, then it allows the new growth to come in and flourish. And you see all the new growth there. You know, see there's a little tree right next to it, for example, that will will grow a lot better when it's not doesn't have a dead tree sitting on top of it. Um, so with the Tampa Median project, we had a $10,000 budget to um, do that project, but that project is not going to happen this fiscal year. So I quickly came up with with this project as our improvement project for this year to try and um, do something with these funds. We have about, well, I gave you the sheet, I think it's about like 16 to 18,000 um, left in our in our budget um, to spend on improvement projects. I don't expect it costing, you know, 10,000, 
But um, the idea, the, the idea, so I met with Jesse Strobel from the council office. I met with Leon, or I can't say his last name. Or well, he, he's the urban forestry manager for Rex and Parks. Um, and we walked through all these locations. And so they're going to go back to Rex and Parks and try and um, secure funding to do a portion of the project themselves. So the idea is to work together with, with Rex and Parks because they have money to work with as well. Um, in partnership to try and bring more city services to uh, the community. So, did you, did you talk to anybody about the Aliso Park? Because it's got the same, same. Problem problems. Yeah. And yeah. it's a it's a very popular hiking uh, uh, park, and, uh, and so nothing is done there. So the the motion could be amended to and initially when we discussed it in committee, we actually Lori was there. We talked about. Uh, putting and surrounding parks so that we could include Aliso as well with that contractor and that budget. So, um, you know, I don't uh, hike Aliso as, as often. I rarely go there. Like for me, the main thing was the dog poo when I went there, but uh, I could certainly set up another meeting and look at doing that park as well. But I'm also working on a, a cleanup in that park too, because I've been approached by some stakeholders as far as doing that, but, it, but that would make encompass uh, tree work. But we could certainly build that into the motion to, um, you know, so the next step is, I've already reached out to the contractor that we used for the existing project that they did last time. We spent 9,000 and we got all those other trees removed. Um, so what they, they do is we can get, you know, so much per crew, so like about 3,600 per crew, so we can get one crew for one day to do one area, and then let's say Rex and Parks is gonna do this part. So we can maybe do the northern section of, of Lime Kiln, and then maybe we could hit Aliso. Um, yeah, if we can, because those are the two hiking trails for the community, Aliso and Lime Kiln. The yeah. main, the, the primary one. So yeah. we, if we so consider we can, sort of, you know, splitting it between the two out of this motion, and then next year if we do the same, we Put between the two and we'd be improving both of them together. Yeah. I have to take a hike up at Aliso and see what we're looking at up there. But you know, probably we could put the Wilbur Tampa Park side on the back burner per se, like as a lower priority, if it's really bad at Aliso Park. You know, but that's you know, that's something that we could work out, you know, when we put the project. If we write it into it surrounding parks. That was the idea is to hit the parks in quarter range. Um, should we go with the wrong first one? So, hold on. Do we have a motion here? Okay. Um, so I'll make the motion. The motion to approve up to ten. Wait, where is it? Motion to approve up to ten thousand dollars to hire a contractor for fallen tree and dead wood removal in Lime Kiln Canyon Park and Wilbur Tampa slash Palisades Park. Do I have to read it like this, or can I do it the way I want them to do it? Yeah, so that, and, and surrounding Porter Ranch parks. Well, parks would be fine. Parks, and obtain a right of entry permit from the Rice and Parks Board. So that's essentially this. It's just a two-page sheet that I have to fill out with them, um, which is this. It's like a questionnaire where they ask for the insurance and uh, who's requesting it. So are you, are you adding the Lisa Park name to the list or not? I'm, I'm putting and surrounding Port Ranch Parks, so that would allow for uh, anything All within parks. Port Ranch. All right. So we have an amended motion. Can I have a second? A second. David Balin seconded. Public comment? You go ahead. You're we public. Do, we do public comment, then we board, we board discussion. Uh, the city is doing tree trimming big time on Tampa right now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. generally, generally, when the city writes a contract like that, there's some room for extras. If the council office were to call uh, street services and ask them, can you take care of some of those, they won't roll in the Palisades Park, but all the stuff of Lime Kiln Canyon within so many feet of Tampa, they may be able to drag that stuff up. And then also, sanitation is going to be coming up very soon because they're going to pick up all the debris from the uh, grass team. 
Uh, so there's two opportunities to get rid of a lot of the stuff right now. That's a good point. So, free. so what you're talking about is urban forestry trees. So potentially they could maybe do the sycamores up here or the bottle brush over here or maybe some stuff along Reseda if they are parkway trees, but I, don't, I think most of those aren't. Um, but the trees that we're referencing here are Rex and Parks, which are two totally different. Yeah, it's two different departments, and it's so close, they could drag those trees up there and get it taken care of. From, from the way that, from the meetings that I've had with the people from the city and Rex and Parks, it's very like, oh no, that's you, that's me. When you're dealing with the council office, maybe it, it's different, but when you're dealing with the departments. Well, the council office needs to make the calls. So when, when I was on the council, I got Rex and Parks to clean up the whole area and blow everything into the curb. And then within two days, street services came right for the ones on the street clean. Right. And so we got record parts to do a little more because they didn't have to haul that stuff away. They just cut it down and, and blew it into the, into the gutter. I know it sounds terrible. Right. But we had street services come right after them in a couple of days. And they, they did yesterday. They came and did that. Exactly. So they will court Just with 311. They, they, yeah, they will coordinate, but someone has to direct them to do that. The council is almost a good start. Okay, this is something I've been working out with them for a long time to try and get them. Just give it a shot. Yeah. Brandy? She was I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to say I support it. Um, I know how hard I worked on Tampa Media in two years. Yeah. That's yeah. application, and um, I'm, I'm just totally in support of um, it. That's it. Thank you. Any other public comments? So, uh, I'm not the expert, but I, I had a, a guard point out to me the other day that Lime Kill Canyon, Canyon is filled with an invasive uh, mustard grass species that is highly flammable. And I'm just wondering if if that's still there and about to cause probably another fire in Lime Kill, do we, do we, does that make this more urgent that we get rid of it sooner or do we wait until the next fire and then get rid of whatever blood there because some of it will burn more? Like so, like when they when they take these trees out, they're, they're going to get all the brush, and then they'll do the weed whacking and knock the you know the grasses down. But you know the thing is, is Rex and Parks is only doing within 200 feet of a structure, and that's the real problem. You know they're not doing anything unless it, and there's no, nothing 200 feet within a structure except when you're by the uh, HOA there. No, the um, the condos there, the townhomes. Yeah, because they showed me it seemed like. Going driving down and looking at it, you can see it's this entire hillside is nothing but this yellow invasive. And they won't they won't do anything about it, and that's where neighborhood councils have to step up, you know. Can we add that to this somehow? Like to remove it uh, certainly, it certainly could be and, and we can village. we can talk and, and but you know when they come out you get the crew and they and they're gonna be, you know, doing what we're telling them to do pretty much. So that's all part of the project. Yes, I totally support this. Um, I want to walk Lisa with you. Lisa thinks we have shorter pockets with an issue, not all length. So your comment at the top of Tampa where the trail comes up into the sidewalk area, that might be an opportunity for that, but the deep stuff the canyon is obviously not. Right. But uh, frankly, it's atrocious that the Cessna fire was in 2009. If, if they need a public safety issue to deal with it, this is a public safety issue. You're going to get fired out of there, ashes carry a mile, it's atrocious. They have dead trees by the dozen from a fire that was a decade ago. And I know they picked that up for They only have a few crews, but uh, it's just completely they, unacceptable. They haven't done this previously. So they did do 21 trees in the area where the path was, where I showed you on Tampa, where there was that one dead tree sticking up. That was the last one that they didn't get, but they did take 20, and they could justify it because people walked through there. They called homeowners. And that was last year. You guys probably remember that. That was through meetings with them that we got them to do that. They hold homeowners to a standard that's 10 times higher that they don't call themselves. The same yeah. people enforce this. April 30th rules. is the deadline, but they don't do their weed abatement until June 1st, which is disappointing. All right. But, uh, that's what we're Any other comment? Uh, one question, uh, Jason. Do you normally get a quote uh, from a contractors who they will do this project? So I've, uh, the guy came out and he's saying that so much per, he gave me a quote for a crew per day. So 3,600 is what he said per crew per day. But that wasn't from the boss, from Jesse, who's the guy who did all the work. So I'm still getting him back out 
and getting a final claim because I still have to figure out if Rex and Parks is going to do anything on this issue. But I will certainly at the next meeting give you, or even when I get an update, I'll give you guys an update. We've got to move. Yes, sir. Is there a bidding process that's legally required? That's what I don't know. Right. I'm wondering about that too. Are we not required to get We're this? required to have a contract signed. So if this is ever, if this is going to happen, I have to get a contract signed with, uh, okay. but I, but I, um, before when we did the last project, I had bids from about 11 different contractors. Okay. All right. Uh, Without objection, let's call the vote. Good. All right, Brandy. Yes. David Balin. Yes. Jason. Yes. Miron. Yes. Ben Jackson. David Lasher. Yes. Lori. Yes. Asad. Yes. Gabriel. Yes. Isam. Yes. Motion passes. All right. Let's speak through this. Jason. Yeah. Yeah. Number twenty-two. Okay. Motion to authorize expenditure for the printing four copy size twenty-four inch by thirty-six inch of the Tampa Median Project. Just to clarify, 22 and 23 are uh, tied together. The yes. first one is authorizing the expenditure, second one is approving. Correct. Okay. We'll get a second. I second. Thank you. May around second it. Public comment on what 22. Is the, what is the project? Uh, so this is the Tampa Median project. We've been doing this, like Lori said, for two years, but I had to submit the large plans, so I had to pay for Kinkos to get those. No, but where is the median? Oh, it's on uh, 118 freeway in Tampa. Like when you make a left, if you're going down, the one pine tree. The one pine tree. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So we're we're probably gonna we're gonna hopefully get that approved and ready for next fiscal year. We keep trying. Okay. We're still there, working. There, there a, a very a public forum. <coughs> I had them do a center median for all of Tampa, all the way to Cessna. There's a drawing, and there's one on Receda Boulevard as well. From there, and all the all the way to Cessna, just to keep in mind. All right. Sometimes there is. So we have a motion and a second. Public comments on to motion 22, item 22. Board comments. Call the vote. All right, Brandy. Step up. All right, David Bailey. Yes. Jason. Yes. Miran. Yes. Thank you, Samson. David Lasher. Yes. Lori. Yes. Hassan. Yes. Gabriel. Yes. Hassan. Yes. And motion passes. Thank you, item 22, Jason. All right. Uh, motion. For board member reimbursement of $22.34 and Jason Hector for four copies, <coughs> size 24 inch by 36 inch of the Tampa Median Project. Can I have a second? I have a second. And Ron seconded. Public comment? Board comment? Call the vote. All right, Brandy is absent. David Baylor? Yes. Jason? Yes. Me Ron? Yes. Becky is absent. David Lasher? Yes. Lori? Yes. Assad? Yes. Gabriel, yes, you saw? Yes. And motion passes. I have 24, Jason. Yeah. Okay, you're keeping us busy. Trying to fill Can I take care of this? Yeah, go ahead. Please. All right. Uh, this is a motion to authorize Jason Hector, the treasurer, to submit the application and pay, and for the board to pay up to $40 to reissue a new uh, ABI tag. That's a parking tag. Uh, in his name, so that when he goes to uh, City Hall to deal with budget issues, uh, he has parking. The background of this is the BRNC had two passes. One was with the from before us. One was with the president. One more was the treasurer. Um, when uh, the new board came, uh, uh, Paula Gracian gave me her pass and the gavel. However, the treasurer never produced the pass. The city has asked him for it. He said he doesn't have it. So we need a new parking pass. It costs $40. It's well worth uh, doing. So the question is to approve that uh, applying for a new pass for this. So that's the motion. And I have a second. Lori seconded. Public comment. You're itching to say something. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sorry, just saying. Yeah. They're, they're not 
I think should be free to go ahead. City fish, city thing should be free. But well, this is a replacement for a lost. That's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, just for that. So really quick, so Jason, is that is that in your name or is it in the name of the Peoria Community Council? It's in the name of the individual. It's applied for the individual, so that the individual has responsibility for it. So it means I have to drive. <laughs> okay, give it to you. Any other comment? All right, call the vote. All right, Brandy. Yeah. Susan Epson. I mean, I can't get her off. <laughs> David Valen. Yes. Jason. Yes. Miran. Yes. Becky Epson. David Asher. Yes. Lori. Yes. Basad. Yes. Gabriel. Yes. Isam. Yes. And motion passes. Thank you. Item point five. This is a motion to approve. Uh, board member reimbursement for $234.49 to David Penny in food expenses for the April board meeting. Second. I second. I have a second from Brandy. <laughs> Public comment? Board comment? I think he's got over his thousand dollars. We'll have to double check on that. Uh, the city clerk will let us know. <laughs> Call the vote. All right, Brandy. Yes. David Valen. Yes. Jason. Yes. Iran. Yes. Thank you, Zaster, David Lasher. Yes. Lori? Yes. Asad? Yes. Gabriel, yes. Isam? Yes. Motion passes. Next one is you, Gabriel, for me. All right. Last motion. Motion to approve board member reimbursement for $28.38 to Isam Najam and printing expenses for the April 2019 board meeting. That's it. And we're on second it. Public comment. <laughs> board comment. Glenn, and do you need like a now? Okay. Uh, call the vote. All right, Randy. Yes. David Valen. Yes. Jason. Yes. Mira. Yes. Becky Zapsa, David Lasher. Yes. Lori. Yes. Assad. Yes. Gabriel. Yes. Yes. All right. Without objection, meeting is adjourned. Thank you.